And this is my last house. I'm about to get my little bonus. How you doing? Man, I am looking for Bambubu. I am Bambubu. Could you please watch my cat? Okay. Please? It's just a little cat. My little kitty. My little fluffy. You want to meet Fluffy? Come come on in, Fluffy. What? I know, cat. Me, Fluffy. This is the best kitty. This is the little kitty. Break yourself, boy. Give me all that money. Give me all that good stuff. Give me all that. I ain't got no money, bro. I ain't got no money, so you might as well go on here about your business somewhere, man. Yo, I know you got some money. You might as well go on about your business, boy. Oh, you got some nappy hair. You're going to have to shoot me. I got something for you. Come on, boy. Oh, yeah. Give me that money. Hold on, now. Get up. Get up. What you going to do with that, man? Hold on, now. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. Give me that money. Give me that money. Give me that money. Give me that money. Oh, oh, oh. Give me that money. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Give me that money. 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 Come on, man. You know it ain't no money on here. They said, you know Will Fogg ain't got no money in my account, man. Yeah. You, you ain't got no cash? I ain't got no cash, man. You, All right. It's too oh, 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 oh. Ah! Can't even sit sleep in your own car. My keys. Be careful on Halloween nights. If you find yourself in a dark alley somewhere, in a dark street corner, and you hear a woman crying, and the crying coming from the shadows, don't go over there. There's a woman who come out on Halloween and she cries, cries her eyes out, cry her heart away, man. Just, just boo-hooing, man. All just waiting for somebody to come and check her out. As soon as you do, her beautiful crying face will be the last thing you ever see. Bro, look, y'all got a man. <laughs> y'all need to be hitting the cash out because the stuff I'm giving y'all, can't get it nowhere else. Did you know that the Crypt Keeper and Chucky both got some similar stories going on. Now, first of all, just look at them, right? Look at the similarities in their face. The robot that they used for Chucky, they took the, the skin off and used the same robot for the Crypt Keeper. And they kept the eyes. They didn't change the eyes. And you even see the structure of the face and all that is the same, man. Now, that's just part one of that. I got some more. I got some more I'm going to drop. I just let, that's just piece number one. Some people don't understand why I do what I do, so I'm going to try to explain it a little bit. What hood horror is, is it's remembering the moments back when you was a little kid. And you'll see all the old members of your family, your granddaddy, grandma, uncles, grand uncles, aunties, all that, man. They all just sitting there and they talking. And they telling stories. And you don't know... And it's like, you just like, and you really ain't supposed, you're supposed to have been asleep somewhere uh, with the other kids, but you just snuck off and you, you listening to these stories and you like, you don't know if they true, but they like, it can't be true, right? It can't, no way, but everybody agreeing with them. It makes sense to everybody. You just sitting there like, dang it. And you hear these stories, man. You carry these stories with you. And that's what I try to do, man. I try to. Take us back to those days, because them days is gone, man. I only got one grandparent left, you know, and um, my family all old and split up and broke up and, you know, nobody grudges and all that. So I try to do, you know, I try to bring it back to, man, you know, sitting on the porch, eating some barbecue and just kicking stories, man. That's what this thing about, man. And, um, you know, and man, that you know, ain't nothing like hearing a good old story, man, because we got to pass this junk down to, you know, we got to pass the stories on. That's what it's all about, man. Back in 1942, it was a man in Mississippi. They called him the Phantom Barber. He was showing up at people's house at night, breaking in, and then cutting their hair and getting up out of there. Now, of course, history only going to tell you about the white folks. I ain't gonna tell you about the black folks, especially back in 42, cause we weren't heard like that. You know, wasn't nobody taking our, our recollection on things or whatever back then. They just be getting their side of it. But 
the uh, Phantom Barber, I don't know if he was black, of course, you know, but he didn't just take white people here. He took black folk here. Now, anybody who I would demand obviously love him. And um, I'm going to tell you something. That's just like how people, you know, people from different races be asking you, ooh, let me touch your hair. Let me see your hair. You know, they, you know like, your hair so that you know, they, you know, that's because they is interested in them. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all gonna learn to stop trying me, bro. Because everything I say be facts. The reason I put Jack Johnson in a photo all the way to your left, he was a heavyweight champ back in the world. He used to mess with white women back in the day. Folks hated him because he messed it with white women. So they hated this man because of that. That's why they wanted to kill him. Same thing from the movie Candyman right here in the middle. Look at the jackets. Look at the jacket that Jack Johnson wore in his, one of his most famous pictures. And look at the jacket Candyman wore in not just the second movie, but even in the remake. You see all the way to the right, that's the remake. He wore the same jacket. So I put Jack Johnson up there for a reason. I ain't just put him up there. I just don't tell y'all the whole thing because, hey, man, if I give you the whole thing, you ain't going to come back. So I just give you a little sample and sprinkle a little of that dust on you. You get, ooh, let me go give me some of that. So that's why I don't give y'all a whole thing right off the rip, man. But that's part two right there. Part three on Candy Man. So this what happened. You got in the Rainy Green Projects in Chicago. I've been there. I'm going to tell y'all some stories about when I've been up in there, too. And what happened was it was a lady who kept calling the police reporting that somebody would came through her mirror, the bathroom mirror, because the bath the bathrooms, the mirror would like lead to the next apartment. So it was like possible to like get like tear out your mirror and that'll lead you to the back of the person next to you. So she was saying somebody was trying to come through the mirror and hurt her. And nobody took us serious. Nobody really believed it. So after sooner or later, Ruthie Mae McCoy came up there in her apartment killed and um you know and th it wasn't like a break-in they came in through the mirror this is george stinney george stinney jr he was killed by america this was the youngest man to ever be executed he was executed at 14 years old because he was wrongfully accused of killing two young white girls so he was forced to confess and was denied a trial or, or denied a a an honest trial. It took them 10 minutes to deliver a verdict. It was a thousand white people in the courtroom. No black people was allowed, not even his family. He faced a thousand white people by himself. And two months after his trial, he was executed. This story has connections to Candyman. In the last Candyman movie, in the beginning, you can see like this story they telling with these little like paper mache cartoon little characters, right? And one of them was a little boy in an uh, electric chair. And that was this little boy, George Stinney Jr. Candyman is not just one man. Candyman is a half. Can't, that's why he be spitting the bees out on the women and junk. Candyman is is multiple people who was wrong through racism, man. People that was killed for no reason just because of their skin color. People that was done wrong. So those people who was done so wrong, the pain so bad that they come back as ghosts to not just revenge their death but hurt anybody who got racism, you know, who anybody who races. So this is further proof that Candyman is based off real people, not just some made up movie that some guy came up with. So in the movie Child's Play, it's a killer doll, right? Now, the whole killer doll thing, where y'all think that came from? Do you think they woke up with the idea of, hey man, let's do a killer doll movie? This whole thing come from voodoo practices. Now they made Chucky White, but Chucky come from Voodoo. The main the movie had uh, the killer in there, right? And he was finna die, so he put his soul into the doll. How you think he did that? In American magic, he did that with Voodoo magic. Now, he was a white guy. How did a white guy know Voodoo? 
I don't know. I guess the movie didn't really have the, the guts to make him black, which they should have done if they, you know, he gonna do voodoo, so he should have been black. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen no white folk who had roots in voodoo. <laughs> Man, I'm sure they out there, but you know what I'm saying? So, Chucky is black. It's stolen mm -hmm. from, because back in the day, they said they could hit this thing where they could bring inanimate dolls alive and send them to go do their dirty work for them. Poison people, you know, stab people in their sleep, stuff like that. Alright, so they say, I don't know if he watched the whole movie or not, but he see my clip and make another video showing people. Alright, so, um, and Chucky. Chucky was a white man. And the white man was learning voodoo from a black man. So, my point of me making my video was that, why would the movie showing you that they stealing the black stuff to put in the movie like that's what the, the whole movie showing you right up front is that the white man stole the black culture and turned around and made Chucky out like they telling you they telling you right in the movie what they doing then they proceed to do what they told you with all the different Chucky movies alright so the witch doctor was in the first movie but I never remember seeing a witch doctor in any of the other movies because Chucky killed him. He stole his stuff, his culture, and then he killed him afterwards, all right? Because he got mad, the black man got mad. So are you going to get mad that I stole from you? So he killed him after that, right? That's my point in making a video is that the Chucky movies should have been a black man because why would a black witch doctor from Haiti or wherever he was from teach a white thief his stuff like it don't matter how nice this white man is he's they not finna just teach you they stuff like that so he but he taught him anyway whatever and he stole it and jacked him from it and chucky been running loose all since now i i, I think chucky should have been a black man or a black woman the movie would have made most sense because the whole voodoo doll thing the whole doll coming to life thing that's part of the voodoo culture not part of no american white culture so this whole thing you know that uh, we voodoo dolls come from black folk, right right europeans didn't make voodoo dolls so that's my point is if you're gonna jack somebody culture get them the credit for it let chucky be a little black doll and get all the little merchandise and stuff I wish I had all the details. I wish I could make it make more sense. I wish I could. I told you, it still bother me to this day, man. It still stick with me. You know, I think about it from time to time. Sometimes I forget. You know how your mind works. Sometimes you forget something. And all of a sudden, it come back like it happened yesterday. So, you know, uh... Like I said, I kind of fell in love with her a little bit. Or at least what I thought was love at the time. And that day I was on the bus, I thought I saw her. So I got off on the next stop. Bus driver was being a jerk and wouldn't let me off. You know how you sitting at the light. But, um, you know, they, the stop was next to on the other side. So they wouldn't let me off until the dang light. And I'm like, can you please just let me off here? Please, let me off here, let me off here. You know, I was actually trying to be nice about it, but the bus driver wasn't hearing it. So by the time I finally was able to get off the bus, I ran back. When I ran back, it was a strip mall over there. I searched every store in that strip mall. It was hard, because I like didn't know, for all I know, she wasn't even in the strip mall. She ain't even going to the store, you know, for all I knew. She could have went another way, but I said maybe it's a chance that she went to one of those stores. So I went in and I looked every aisle, every corner, wondering maybe if she was in the bathroom. So that's the only places I couldn't look. I searched for her, I looked for her. And after about maybe two, three hours, I think it had to be about two or three hours, I went back to the park. I pulled out my phone and I called her again and straight to voicemail. And I sat there and I just sat there and watched. So, you know, I wish I could tell you something more. I wish I could, I wish I could, could just tell you that I, that, that it was like a movie. But love, real life ain't like movies, man. 
Real life ain't always got all the pieces and all the details in place. Sometimes there's some things that happen that's unexplainable. I wish I could make sense of it. But I sat and I got up to go and get on the bus. That night, I stayed up just staring at my phone, right? Just hoping that maybe she would call, maybe she would return. So, about a week went by, you know, I got caught up in my young teenage life or whatever. And so after a week went by, I called her, sitting on the weekend, nothing to do. And her phone actually did ring this time. Boy. Yeah, yeah. What is, what is, the heck is you been standing out here about 30 minutes, man? man. There's something in those trees, man. Right there, through the leaves, look. You see it? Uh, what, a squirrel? Raccoon? Possum? Bird? Something in the trees, man. Bro, you need to uh, quit smoking them trees. Come on, man, we got stuff to do, man. We sitting there watching the dang trees out there. One thing I always find crazy about slavery time was that how black women was trusted to raise the white children up. You know, it's, it's funny that they, they looked at black people like they was, you know, a fraction of a human. You know, not able to vote, not able to be free, just, you know, not, even, not able to learn to read, just all these types of things, man. But then at the end of the day, you trusted them to raise your children. You trusted them to feed your children. You know, they breastfed white babies along with their own babies. It's just amazing that, you know, you had a world where, <laughs> you know, so it just shows you that no matter how people may treat you, they can't deny what's good in you. So here you see a white woman and, her, and another white woman, they kids, and they sitting here posing for a photo back in the day. You can tell this is way back in the day, man. And in the middle of them taking a photo, a body fell down through the attic. Now, it's rumored that this body was from a man that was murdered, and I, the guy taking a photo did the murder. And he thought it'd be cool or I guess cute or whatever, to take the photo right where he hid the man that he murdered. But the man he murdered busts right down through the roof in the middle of the picture. And um, now, I don't know if he got away with it because, you know, hey, this is back in the, in the days when black people wasn't, and it looked like a black man in the, that's falling through the roof. So this back in the day when we weren't, you know, really respected like that. But if he did get away with it, I know those little kids and the women never looked at him the same. All right, now we finna figure out who the real creeps is. Anybody who know what this is, tell me in the comment section, then I'm gonna tell y'all the real story about it. All right, so I'm gonna talk about some copycat killers of Freddy Krueger. So there's one guy, this glove you see here. I ain't gonna say his name or show his picture because you know, I'm not really, you know, I don't like to, I'm not trying to glorify these people. I don't think what they did is cool or, I don't think what they did is, you know, some interesting thing. So I ain't going to get into all that. But I just want to talk about he copied Freddy because he was so in love with Freddy or just a horror fanatic. Now, I'm a horror fanatic. Man. Like, I could watch horror movies every single day. You know, man, I could do that. But, you know, I ain't trying to go imitate the stuff they do, man. You know, it's just fantasy, man. It's just it's just something for entertainment. But he basically made his own Freddy glove and caught his homeboy while he was sleeping. I guess they was like roommates or something. So he went in there while he was sleeping, man. And um, I guess he called himself Freddy. He gonna come and put the glove on when he cut his face. He made the glove at home. That junk look. <clears throat> now, Jim. <clears throat> I'm gonna let you sleep on my couch tonight. All right. Now, don't act like you don't know. What? You what? know it's all type of urban legends and folk tales going around you like to leave head chips and, and scales all over people's couch. Now, I'm the last family member you got. 
Come on now. You done left head chip song along Uncle Ben couch. Auntie Rose couch. Your mama daddy. Cousin Cleo couch. Gotta go to sleep now. You got one chance, boy. Go I ahead. Just go to sleep, go ahead, man. Go ahead, but sleep. Go ahead. Now. I appreciate you. Thank you kindly. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Come on from here now. Jimmy, get up, boy. Come on, man. It's two o'clock and I don't you still sleep. Get, get up off my couch, boy. Come on, man. What what you what, what you see, man? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I think it is. What's that right now? What is it? What is this? What is that? Please tell me to say what I think it is, Jimmy. What? Now, I told you before I ain't got no head chips, boy. I know. Jimmy? I ain't got that no more. Take your hat off. No, nah, man. For what? Take you your hat off. It's cold in here. Take your hat off, boy. You ain't gonna make me take my hat off? Take that off. Lord. Take that off. Lord. Lord. Now, you ain't have to do me like this now. You, you know I need somewhere to sleep. I need plates. somewhere to sleep. You're going to get every one of these chips up. Oh, get no. these chips up, boy. That's what to do with these chips, man. And you ain't never going to sleep in here no more. <laughs> Come on now. What you want? What you want? Nah, I know I don't nobody want you This boy lost it. Hello, huh? Now, why are you trying to... I said I was going to hoop. I didn't say you should go. You know you're too old to be a hooper, man. I'm 28 years old, man. You ain't tell me I can't hoop. Man, what I look like? Man, them I young boys is going to tear you down, boy. They're going to break you down. I'm Michael Jordan, man. Watch hey, out. but you know you got a bad back. Don't worry about my back, man. What that? <laughs> Come on here now. All right. Well, I get the show. Ah. Come on, I'm not telling you not to be out there playing with oh. you young boy. Hold me now. You got fake now. Why didn't I tell you? Ah, get so silly. Ah. Oh, oh, my man. Get your hands off me, man. Ah. Ah. Didn't I tell you don't be out there with them young boys? Ah. Now look at you. Oh, fool. Oh, my man. Get your hands off me, 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 man. Get your Tell you. It, ain't, it ain't moving. <laughs> hey man, I got the best chiropractor in the city. I'm going to call him. He's going to come back and he's going to get oh, you right. What's his name, man? Big Daddy. Big, Big Daddy. Daddy's chiropractor. Okay. Listen, Stop. Big Daddy done fixed me up plenty of times. <laughs> I hope he can fix me, he man. He's going to fix you, boy. I'm going to call him right now. All right, come me. on. I hope he can fix me. Come on. I don't know his name, he ain't got no basketball shorts on. Is this the guy? That's him. I'ma wrench you around a little bit. Right? Get him right, big daddy. Now. Hold on, now. Hold on. Put that right there. Turn that backwards. Chin up. Ready? Yup. Yeah. And here we go. Oh! Oh! How you feel? I feel pretty good, Doc. Come on, man. Ain't got to do all that now, Doc. Hold on, wait, wait, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cold out here. I came over here to tell you, I ain't got the money, man. 
I don't want to hear none of that. Where my I money? Got, I'm gonna come back and get it to you. Where my money? I'm gonna get it to you as soon as I get it, man. No, I try to get it from my dad. You ain't got my money? I try to get it from my dad. You ain't got? You want? <laughs> Ooh. I guess he went on. He went on and did it, didn't he? I told you you're gonna have a pad, boy, man. I told you you'd give me $50. I told you you'd give it to me. If I'd known, son, I'd give you the 50 man. I know you're gonna slap the dang taste out of your mouth. Can I'm you even taste it? it Let's see what I got on the phone. <laughs> 157 missed call. Oh, hey, man, what you doing on my phone, man? What was you doing having some call, boy? What you been doing, boy? Nah, I sold, I sold, like, I sold the whole hood some flour, told me it was cocaine, Lord, man. I can't believe this, boy. I can't go outside, man. I ain't been outside in three weeks, man. What you gonna do, man? Them folks is gonna get the dick. I'm gonna steal somebody's identity, man. It ain't gonna be mine. Them folks gonna get you, boy. Somebody told him wrong. Cold, man. You good? You good? I heard you got the rat issue. Yeah, man, I got a little rat. You know what I'm saying? This, this gonna be 1,200 schmack, right? Man, for for a little mouse like this. Is it right in the house? Yeah, it's a little bit. Is that the front door? Yeah, go on. You go ahead up there. I'm going to just stay down here. You little rat cop. But I ain't no little rat boy. Ho, ho, see ho. On today's episode of the Hood Crocodile Hunter, we're going to be hunting the Barrella. Let's go get them, boys. Now, as you can see, they like to keep their environment nice and messy. Have a real keen sense of smell. <laughs> it's too messy and heavy, baby. I, I think it's in here. <laughs> You hear that noise? That's the noise to make when you're defecating. Now I'm gonna open it up real slow. There's the bear in the guys. There's the bear in the guys. Look out the mission! Evacuate! Evacuate! Evacuate mission! Evacuate the mission! Yeah! Hey, just hit the like button if you're gonna try to get her phone number. That's all I want. All right, we're going to talk about another guy who was a Freddy Krueger copycat. He um went on a, a, a stabbing spree and, and attacked multiple people, some of them being like senior citizens, man, if not all of them. You know, I, I ain't read much of the details on this because, like I say, you know, these type of people I ain't trying to glorify, so I ain't dropping his name. I'm not showing his picture, but... um. He was a huge horror fanatic, man. So he went out and um and, and was trying to copy Freddy and copy his Freddy and, and he wore a Jason mask. So I guess he looked at it like his character like was Freddy. You know how Freddy kinda goofy and, and talk a lot of junk, but he was but he wore a Jason mask in the midst of the killings, man. So this guy man was all jacked up. And, um, you know, uh, go out to the victims, man. You know, hey, I love horror movies. Watch them every day, but they just movies. Right? Hey, some of y'all might not feel this, but on some real junk, I think it would be nice to see Freddie be a black woman. You know, like uh, Fred, you could do a call of Frederica, man. On some real junk, like none of the, like for Freddie, man. Freddie, as a black woman, I think it'll make sense because for one, uh, black women, they, 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 they look, yeah, you know how a black woman can watch you while you sleep? Like when she mad at you, she watch you while you sleep. And it's been countless, countless, uh, occurrences of black women 
busting their man upside the head with skillets and drunk in the middle of their sleep, man. So, like, to me, man, what's better? And a black woman, like, you know, they know how to be real manipulative and, and always get revenge and junk on you. So, you know, hey, man, it hey, hey, wouldn't never be better than a black woman is Freddy Krueger, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. This is a story somebody sent me, man. Y'all can send me stories. I'm going to put my email up top here, man. Send me a story, man, and I'll come and read it. So, this is the first story I got sent since I've been on TikTok. It said, I don't want to post my name, but one night, me and my homies and I was walking through the woods. And they said while they was walking through the woods, they was looking for a place to go smoke. You know, they were still underage. You know, when you're underage, can't you just smoke all out. You know, you got to go find your little spot, man. You know, a lot of neighborhoods, they had little spots where the little teenagers go out there and smoke. Man got, man, even man got, and I stay in the suburbs now. But, um, yeah, man, um, so they said they were going out to smoke. Now, one of their friends had been telling them that he really didn't like doing that, and he just came along with them because, you know, he, um, you know, that's all they did. <laughs> so, you know, he didn't want to let them down. But, the, you know, they kind of knew that he wasn't really feeling that stuff. So he kept going with them anyway or whatever. So one night, they said he just walked off deeper into the woods. And they was like, man, bro, where you, know, where you going? Where you going? And he just walked. He wouldn't say nothing. He wouldn't turn around. And they said he was just walking like on some Michael Myers type walk. So they say they ran up to go follow him and see where he was going. And um, they lost him. So they didn't really want to split up because it was dark out there. And um, they were scared anyway because he was acting creepy. So they was all scared. So they didn't want to split up. So they walked a little further and they stayed together. They ain't do no um, Scooby-Doo, Fred, um, hey, let's split up, gang. No, they stayed together, boy. They said, yeah, I feel them on that, bro. I ain't splitting up either. So they say as they went through the woods, they heard, they started hearing a noise, like screaming. And so they say they figured it was him. So they ran to the screen. And when they got to the screen, they seen a face like a ghost face just in the middle of the woods staring at him. They say this the face right there that was just staring at him like a ghost demon zombie face or whatever. And they say it wasn't nobody to it. It wasn't connected to nothing. And it was just staring at him. And it said as they would move, it would follow him like this. And they had their flashlights on on their phones and junk, I guess. So, you know, this really all he said they got. And um, he said after that, his face like screamed. So now I'm going to do a big explanation on Candyman and tell y'all the real origins of the movie. So first, Jack Johnson was a heavyweight champion of the world, black man. At a time back in the early 1900s when people hated black people, he loved it, white women. So he used to mess with white women all the time. Man, He married a white woman. White people hated the fact that he messed with white women. They hated the fact he was the champion. They hated the fact he was knocking white boys out. All right. So the first similarity to Candyman. Candyman was killed because he was messing with a white woman. So a gang of white folks caught him, beat him down, put honey on him, sick some bees on him and cut his right hand off. Now, in one of the famous images, you see Jack Johnson wearing his same coat. That Candyman wore, and not just the old movie, but also the re-release of the movie. The one that just came out a few years ago by Jordan Peele or whatever. Jack Johnson had to go to jail because they made a law where, like, if you took a woman across state lines to do something uh, nasty with, then it was against the law. But it was, like, really, it was just made so black men couldn't take white women across state lines something like that right he ended up doing a year in jail and in jail he fought you know fought exhibition fights and all that kind of stuff too it's a little sad note i like the way jack johnson you know even though all the prison pictures i found of him he was always smiling man i like that about him man now after he came out of jail the up-and-coming next big boxer was jack dempsey now at this time uh, Jack Johnson was old, 43, 42, 42, 43 years old. He was old. He was washed up and uh, he was broke. 
He had a private fight against Dempsey. And in this private fight, the newspaper report said that he was beaten with a right hook. That's another Candyman thing. Because why, why does Candyman have a hook for a hand? What's the explanation behind the hook? It ain't no explanation behind the hook other than Jack uh, was Jack Jack Dempsey beat uh, Jack Johnson with a right hook. That's why Candyman has a hook on his right hand. Also, one of the famous fights, Jack landed a right hook on a guy that kind of that they say sucker punched him, and uh, he got right back up after the sucker punch and blasted the guy with a right. You know, so hey. That's a huge similarity. That's why Candyman got the hook on the right hand. In the latest movie, they and in Candyman like history or whatever, there's many black. There's like five or six Candymen, and they all is people that was wronged by white society. So now they came back for their revenge in their afterlife after you say their name five times. So recently, President Trump just pardoned. Johnson for his year he did in jail. He just pardoned that junk just a couple of years ago. So the thing is Jackson died in a society that hated him for no reason other than he was black. So Candyman spirit is just like that. It's spirits of people that was wronged when they was alive. So now they came back for revenge. So I'm not saying Candyman is Jack Johnson, but I'm saying the inspiration for Candyman came from Jack Johnson. If that ain't enough for you, then you just being difficult and you ugly. Sometimes as messed up as America is, man, we still, you know, we got it good over here, man. Yeah, it's a lot of dirt they do. It's a lot of things ain't right, man. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of suffering. But hey, man, you know, you know, I, I've been in, I go to, to Chicago a lot throughout the year. It's my hometown, man. And it's some rough parts. It's some real bad parts. You know, even Atlanta, man. Atlanta got some tow up parts. Every city got some tow up parts, man. Baltimore, man. It's, you know, it's just a lot of places, man. But sometimes the worst we get is a, is a, is paradise in some of these other countries, man. Hey, bro, I got a real question, man. Could you live next to the, something like this? Like, you know, okay, you got a house, man. Bam, you didn't get the house. And then, like, down the street, man, it's a, it's just like a, a crater, man. Like, boy, I couldn't live next to nothing like this, man. Heck no, bro. I go, man, shoot, just no, even if I live, like, like, over here, you know, in the, over here in the front, so, man, I still, I don't even know if I can sleep at night in a <laughs> big old hole back there, man. Ain't no way, man. Shit. Uh, uh, I could, man. But, you know, that land got to be cheap. Bro, it got to be cheap to live next to a, a big old crater like that, man. Bro, that junk too big, but uh, I couldn't do it. Could y'all do it? Let me know. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. You better watch it. Because, like, I, I mean, like, I've been up in Chicago. I, I be up there all the time. Now, nah, man, it be like, like, I want to do some filming up here. And I be kind of trying to scout out little spots, you know, so we come up here. But I'm telling you, man, under them bridges and certain little areas, you better watch. Because you see how they got this laid out? They telling you something. This is my house, all right? So don't be just, don't just come. <laughs> Excuse me, don't just come walking right through my house, man. You gonna, you know, show some respect. Think I'm playing. I mean, one time, man, it was a bus stop. And this lady would be at the bus stop every morning, man. And, I, and it was a sit down, like, shelter bus stop. And, uh, I used to be one, I, I go stand behind that thing, man. Cause she was tell you, she like, hey, you gonna come in my house? You better take your shoes off. That lady wasn't playing. If you was gonna stand at that bus stop, you better take your shoes off when you came up in her house. Alright, somebody sent me a story, man. I'm gonna send you my, um, I'm gonna send you my, e I'm gonna put my email on the screen so you can send me any scary stories out here, any paranormal, whatever. But they told me, man, they say one night they was out doing deliveries, right? And I could feel that because I'm a delivery driver too, man. So I know what it'd be like, man, out there late doing them deliveries, man. Can't see and all that junk, man. So they say they get to a warehouse and there's supposed to be a guy there that stayed there like late at night so they can get the delivery. So they said they got there and they only saw one car. But he said the car he was looking at 
it was like it was raggedy and like the one of the tires was flat. So he like, man, I don't think this nobody caught him. Well, it looked like it's old, but he couldn't really tell for real. And plus, you got that delivery on your truck. You already know you can't go home till you drop that truck off. Like you can't take it home with you. You know, you better get on the phone. You gotta find hope somebody, cause you gotta drop that thing off, man. So he said he went around the back, went around the back of the warehouse. Now in the back, he said they had the sliding door was up. So he said he pulled up to the sliding door and, um, and, 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 you know, tried to beep his horn and stuff. Said nobody would come. So after that, he said he got out and walked up to the door and said when he went like to go in the warehouse he heard some over in the woods now he said he got real scared but then he thought you know probably just a squirrel or something and then it sounded like it was he heard something like hey 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 so he figured like okay that must be um he got scared but at the same time he figured it was you know probably the guy just went out for a smoke break or something so when he <laughs> he looked up he said he saw a pig man crawling at him full speed down on all fours man so <laughs> I ain't gotta tell you what he did after that he did the same thing I'd have done I'd have took that truck I'd have took that truck home with me for the night and the next morning if they was tripping on me I'd take whatever in that truck to the pawn shop man cause ain't no way I'm finna go back to that warehouse period man. so it was this lady just started this new job at this warehouse security overnight right now overnight security is cool it's an easy job because all you got to do is sit there on your phone and unless some break in and most of who really finna break into you know a warehouse you know yeah it, it could happen but it ain't gonna be often <laughs> you know so she you know she's just chilling there walk, you know doing her thing or whatever and she heard a noise now it sounded like a big bang somewhere off in the distance down this corridor or whatever so she go check it out and uh you know and she wasn't eager to go check it out now but you know she said hey, probably something just fell you know i walk down there shine i guess turn the flashlight on shine it around whatever so she said she went down there and uh and she looked at the wall next to her where she kind of so when she got down there she saw some stuff was knocked over like some boxes and junk in the corner of the, of the big room was knocked over so you know she said she couldn't figure out how they fell over or if somebody knocked them over she's like she know ain't nobody knocked them over because she the only one there and she said maybe you know it's possible you know sometimes like you know maybe the wind catch it a certain way that the air conditioner come on and and knock it over maybe it was a possum or something a raccoon so you know whatever so you know she said she got a little nervous but you know it wasn't, it wasn't too bad so she went to kind of stack the boxes back up and she looked up at the wall where they fell and she saw this picture like this thing in a picture now it kind of don't look like nothing but if you really look at it it looked like a head and a skinny like skeleton type body and then maybe like a hand that's like out like this see how that left hand just look like it's kind of out maybe a little bit yeah, it kind of look like a little ghost zombie man now i don't know what the pay was on this job but she uh i'm assuming she quit that night <laughs> you know i'm assuming she was out of there because i'm not well let me see how much i got to get paid to how much i got to get paid to stay there uh maybe maybe 30 maybe 30 an hour could do it maybe 35 35 no problem but maybe 30 maybe 25 maybe shoot my bro but man i'll be there 15 y'all give me 15 man i'll be there shoot i ain't like tonight i'm gonna show you a video it might mess with you it's not nothing crazy disturbing what you need to tell the kids and stuff to go to bed but it's enough to mess with you just a little bit. I don't know if you believe in UFOs or not. Me personally, I believe the government got all the technology that we done seen in these movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But here's an abduction, video proof of an abduction. 
Let me know what y'all think. You said it looked like what? Daddy and Michael Myers. <laughs> it looked like me? Yeah. Yeah, it looked like Daddy and Michael Myers, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the original bag. Uh, you want to be Michael Myers for Halloween? No, I am. A wolf. You're a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> a werewolf? So now I'm finna do a big explanation on Candyman and tell y'all the real origins of the movie. So first, Jack Johnson was the heavyweight champion of the world, black man, at a time back in the early 1900s when people hated black people. He loved it, white women. So he used to mess with white women all the time, man. He married a white woman. White people hated the fact that he messed with white women. They hated the fact he was the champion. They hated the fact he was knocking white boys out. All right? So, the first similarity to Candyman. Candyman was killed because he was messing with a white woman. So, a gang of white folks caught him, beat him down, put honey on him, sick some bees on him, and cut his right hand off. Now, in one of the famous images, you see Jack Johnson wearing his same coat that Candyman wore, and not just the old movie, but also the re-release of the movie. The one that just came out a few years ago by Jordan Peele or whatever. Jack Johnson had to go to jail because they made a law where like if you took a woman across state lines to do something uh, nasty with, then it was against the law. But it, it was like really, it was just made so black men couldn't take white women across state lines, something like that, right? He ended up doing a year in jail and in jail, he fought, you know, fought exhibition fights and all that kind of stuff, too. It's a little sad note. I like the way Jack Johnson, you know, even though all the prison pictures I found of him, he was always smiling, man. I like that about him, man. Now, after he came out of jail, the up-and-coming next big boxer was Jack Dempsey. Now, at this time, uh, Jack Johnson was old, 43, 42, 42, 43 years old. He was old, he was washed up, and uh, he was broke. He had a private fight against Dempsey. And in this private fight, the newspaper report said that he was beaten with a right hook. That's another Candyman thing. Because why Why does Candyman have a hook for him? What's the explanation behind the hook? It ain't no explanation behind the hook other than Jack, uh, was Jack, Jack Dempsey beat uh, Jack Johnson with a right hook. That's why Candyman has a hook on his right hand. Also, one of the famous fights, Jack landed a right hook on a guy that kind of that they say sucker punched him, and uh, he got right back up after the sucker punch and blasted the guy with a right. You know, so hey, that's a huge similarity. That's why Candyman got the hook on the right hand. In the latest movie, they and in Candyman like history or whatever. There's many black, there's like five or six candy men, and they all is people that was wronged by white society. So now they came back for their revenge in their afterlife after you say their name five times. Oh, so recently, President Trump just pardoned Johnson for his year he did in jail. He just pardoned that junk just a couple of years ago. So the thing is, Jackson died in a society that hated him for no reason other than he was black. So, Candyman's spirit is just like that. It's spirits of people that was wronged when they was alive, so now they came back for revenge. So, I'm not saying Candyman is Jack Johnson, but I'm saying the inspiration for Candyman came from Jack Johnson. If that ain't enough for you, then you just being difficult and you ugly. Now, some of y'all might be too young, but I remember playing Mario, Super Mario 64, on Nintendo 64. And uh, in every other Mario game that it's been where he talked, he always was a Italian man. Now, you can kind of look at him and say, maybe he, uh, maybe he Mexican, 
you know, Italian, Mexican, you know, whatever. But now in this movie, he just straight up white boy. It don't even make sense, man. Rumors of a dog woman began to circulate in the alleys of Chicago. They said she prowled the streets at night, half human and half canine, watching people from the shadows. All right, let's see, you folk, what they doing? They, okay, they, they going on a little hiking thing. They're like a bunch of white folks. They taking a good hiking team, or they probably a hiking group or something, you know, hikers from Christ or something. Whoa. <laughs> Man. Now you can say that this is just like a prop for a store or something, but why police follow them? Why would police follow them if this ain't uh, just a, if it's just a prop? That's crazy. There's some rumors going around about a Mississippi. It's a dog woman, and what she do is she go out at night and dig up folks, so they put them in a grave. There's been reports of a man who's been walking around the hood at night beating up dope dealers. I call him trap man. Hey, all y'all single guys out there dating, man, be careful, because it's a big girl out there. Her name Two Chairs. Now, Two Chairs, they call her that because it takes two chairs to sit her down. Now, Two Chair would, uh, you make her mad, she don't just, you know, hurt you like any old normal girl. She crawls up on the ceiling like this here, and she come down, boy, I'm talking about it. When she come down, <laughs> I don't know where y'all from, but if you from where I'm from, when you see folk running, you run, all right? Don't be trying to look back and see what they running. Don't be... That's no question. They get to the moving and groove, you get to move and groove, right? I almost got caught by a crackhead clown, man, back when I was in grammar school. Man, I'm not tripping because I keep seeing these folk got scared to death. But I ain't seen what um what scared them. So am I tripping or, or what? Cause I, I just don't see it, man. Then a dog came back. Alright, so these mugs out here riding motorcycles in the jungle, boy. Like, yeah, dang, man. So they sitting here riding, man. Look, 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 look at this uh, jungle man back there. Why well, I mean, beat the dog mess out there, man. You want to act like a dog, I beat the dog mess out you. I ain't finna. So look, he's sitting here working. It looked like something snatched this man up under there. Watch this. Like, he ain't fall. He got snatched up under there. Look. It's this new monster out called the Dancing Lady. I'm from Chicago, man. I always see ladies dancing out at night in the middle of the street, man. There ain't no big deal. So they up here playing the drums up in the thing, and here comes the ghostesses outside. <laughs> they sink them so they say, yeah, boy, turn that door, turn that racket down. I'm trying to sleep, man. I ain't been able to sleep. You know how you got to take one of the middle of the night dudes? That's what he was doing, and he sank this little boy sticking his feet out from under the sink, boy. God dang. Ooh, I know his stomach said, oh. Now look, it's supposed to be something creepy up in this thing right here, but I don't see it, man. So if y'all see it, let me know, man, because I don't like, look right here, right here. Maybe maybe something back there, you think that's something? Let me know, because to me, it, it All right, so let me explain this a little bit. So what's going on here is this guy named is Bebe. Now, it's like a French way of saying baby. They call him Bebe. So the family was known throughout Austria. And um, he had a routine that he did with a like a black little ventriloquist dummy. So he would take the black little kid and um, and it was like, you know, the kid was crazy and wild and out of control because you know how they looked at black people. You know how it went. So it was uh, like the kid was wild and out of control and he would like get the kid and, you know, tame him, make him try to teach him how to be normal, try to teach him how to, you know, just do normal stuff like we do every day. But he would try to teach the kid like, you know, how to act in public and a little boy would be acting crazy in a mug in public man and uh and that's that was the act man so when they made the movie baby's kids that's where it kind of come from from this guy with the way he was couldn't get the kid under control that's where baby's kids came. hey this is a show i've been meaning to watch it's called ghost watch and i think it's from um the bbc like over there in the uk or something so they this show came on and it was so scary that people was thinking it was real, man. Like it was like a, I guess like a documentary or something like that. And they said this mug's so scary that people was freaking out. People was, you know, calling in to the station, all kind of stuff. And, um, I gotta try to find this, man. If somebody know where, you know, with stream, if it's on the streaming platform, now tell me where it's free now, cause I ain't finna pay now. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I want to see it, but I don't want to see it that goddamn bad now, you know. But anybody know where this thing at, man? Let me know, cause I do want to see it. Something that's that scary where folk think it's real. I guess they must have presented it like news, maybe. So maybe that's why people thought it was real. But yeah, man, you know, check. Y'all let me know something, man. I gotta see that junk for. 
Yeah, so I told y'all, man, UFOs and junk is real. I just don't believe it come from aliens, but it come from right here in America. Look at that. Look at that, man. Look at that. that ain't, look, this ain't no movie scene. This ain't no... This is a real freaking photo, man. Look at it. Now, I'm going to tell you something, man. If, cause if aliens was real... Bro, come on. If aliens is real, if you think ain't nobody made it here by now? Come on, man. <laughs> you know, so I don't believe in aliens, man. But... The technology they got, America has this technology. The proof is they got them Harrier jets, man, that can just float in mid-air, all right? They can float in mid-air. They've been here technology from jets that can just float in mid-air, man. They got it here. It's just every now and then they bring the, the one shaped like a plate out, and they fly it around just to see what's going to happen, man, just to mess with people a little bit. It was all part of the game, man. It's all part of the game, baby. Don't, like, you know, why they do it, they can do it just. Hey, y'all gonna trip on this one, man. Let me tell you something. Tales from the Crypt was a real thing, man. Tales from the Crypt was inspired by a guy that was um, working at a funeral home, right? But it wasn't, you know, like, so, so sometimes when you're in the South, right, they take, like, these big mansion-like houses, man, like big plantation-like houses, and they, um, and, you know, and when, like, as time go, they don't, they, they become, like, parts of the historic area, so they don't live in them. They turn them into businesses and stuff. So this mansion was turned into a funeral home. It looked real nice, but you know, over the years, people got old and stuff, and people were moving out the town and everything. So it was only a few people left in the town, and it was the guy they called him the Crypt Keeper because he watched out for the for the place. So one day, you know, after they didn't hear from him for like you know some time went by, they didn't hear from him. So they went down and found he was in the basement in a casket and one nothing but bones, man. In this picture here, you see a lady who kept telling everybody that she was possessed by a demon. Nobody believed her. Nobody listened to her. Until one night, she kept talking about she couldn't breathe. Now, time, you know, so, you know, back then, especially in these days, man, a lot of times women with, you know, a lot of your husband, if you, like, if his woman get to acting crazy, nowadays a girl act crazy, she cuts you out. And, <laughs> you know, you can't do nothing about it, but, you know, lick your wounds, go, you know, run to your mama, right? But back then, your girl, she get acting crazy, man. All you had to do is call the crazy house, man. They'd take her right up out of there, man. So her husband had a call, put her in a place or whatever. So they come to check on her one night, man. They kept hearing her screaming from they set her cell, but nobody go and check, thinking she just having an episode. And when they got there, they took this image of two hands choking her, killing her from the inside. All right, look, man. <laughs> hey, see, dude, when I come get y'all proof, then I want folks to be asked for proof and saying I'm lying and saying they want to come in here and say, my bad, big brother. Come, that's all I ask now. So let me show you something. The man from Jeepers Creepers, the killer from Jeepers Creepers was inspired by this serial killer right here named Dennis DePue. This man killed folk and then he threw him down the, um, he threw him just like how in the movie Jeepers Creepers. And he threw his throwing people down the pipe. The man was hiding the bodies at a church, or at an old abandoned church, or old abandoned building, just like Jeepers Creepers. That's where Jeepers Creepers came from. He looked just like the guy. Let me move me out the way. He looked just like the guy. They both got this big, tall head. Both got a stupid-looking smile on their face, all right? This is where Jeepers Creepers came from. Jeepers Creepers, like I told y'all, was inspired by the real serial killer, just like all the rest of these movies inspired. They steal the stuff from real serial killers, all right? Now, you can sit here and believe that Hollywood is making this stuff up on their own, but they is not, man, okay? They ain't that creative. They're not creative to come up with this stuff, man. They take real-life people, and then they turn them into superhuman supervillains, all right? They make them cool, like Jeepers Creepers. When we watch Jeepers Creepers, we, like, rooting for Jeepers Creepers, man, because he's cool. You know, he like, oh, he got the raincoat on, or he got the pimp hat on, you know, he got the nice truck. You know, they make him cool, man. He laughing and smiling and all that stuff. Like, they make Jeepers Creepers cool, so that way you're a root for them. So they know if they made the movie based on the you know, white boy over here, they know you ain't going to root for him. You know, like with the Jeffrey Dahmer show, look at the flack they caught from um, Jeffrey Dahmer show. Because people don't want to see that for real, like that it's too real, man. You know, you can't root for them. You hate them too much. But see, you can root for Jeepers Creepers, though, right? 
You can rock with him. So that's how Hollywood get down, man. Now I saying I ain't saying I knock him for it, man. It is what it is. But I'm just saying recognize, man. You know, just recognize. Now, you know, don't be thinking these guys coming up with this junk on their own. They be studying these killers, man. The same way actors say they study for roles. The Joker, uh, uh, um, the guy when they just did this last Michael, when they this last Michael Myers trilogy, the man said he was studying serial killers and stuff. That's how he he got the way he moved, the way Mike moved and all that, man. This, this he said that junk out his own mouth, man. So quit falling for the okie doke. And I don't know why folk hating on me. Hey, I'm just telling the truth, bro. All right, so here you go, man. Jeepers Creepers was based off this real serial killer, Dennis DePue. I remember seeing this when I was a little kid. It was on Unsolved Mysteries. I used to watch it with my grandma. You know, and she gone now. She just left it not too long ago. But when I was a little kid, I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries with her. It was like one of the best memories I got. And it was an episode on that. He was getting followed by the van. He was in a van and they got out the way. He ran past him. And then they caught up with him later and seen him dumping the bodies with the red, the, the white sheets with the red blood and stuff on it. He did this. That was how he got rid of his bodies. Same thing like in a movie. That's where Jeepers Creepers got it from. Jeepers Creepers was inspired by him. Now they made him into a superhero. Look at the look. You see, I look just like him. Look at the eyes. Look at the mouth. Look at the smile. Look at the bottom lip. Look at the chin. Look at the whole how tall his head is from top to bottom. Come on, man. I don't be spit you. I be spit none but. It was this girl I used to know. Me and her met, you know, on, um, on online back in the day on a website called Tag. Now y'all young folk might not know it, man. I'm young too, but I ain't young as some of y'all. But Tag was like it was. It went Tag, then it was MySpace, then it was Facebook. So Tag was just like a little app, man. A lot of folk used it for dating and stuff, man, back when we was in high school. And it's this girl I met. And she, um, man, we ended up, you know, living not too far from each other. So one day I messed around and caught the bus to a park where she told me she'd meet me at. And when I got there, you know, I saw her. She saw me. We walked up, you know, hugged and just kind of sat down on the bench and talked. And she told me, she said, you know, we was talking normal and everything was smooth. Then all of a sudden, she told me, I ain't got long left. So, you know, me, I took it as she meant, like, you know, I ain't really got long to talk. So, you know, I told her, I said, okay, that's cool. You know, man, we just talked for a little minute before, um, you know, before I head out or whatever, man. And we talked and talked. And, um, you know, I figured, okay, maybe she liked the conversation. So she's just going to stay. So, um... She looked at her watch. She had a cute little watch on, man. And she looked at her watch. And then she said, I ain't got much time left. I got to go. And she gave me a kiss on the cheek. And that kind of caught me off guard. You know, I'm like, oh, shit, man. Like that. You know, you're a kid, man. A kiss on the cheek, a big deal, boy. And um, she said, you know, I was like, okay, you need me, you know, walk you, blah, blah, blah. She was like, nah, don't worry about it. And, um. We, she said uh, she had to catch one bus going one way, I had to catch a bus going the other way, so I went my way and I went hers. And uh, I went and got on the bus, waiting on the bus, and I, you know, I just kind of watched her walk away. And then when I got on the bus, I looked, and I seen her standing there watching. She still was watching me. And I waved at her, but she didn't wave back. And uh, I never heard from her again after that, you know. Well, here goes some more proof. Like I say, all these movies come from real stuff. Uh, the Friday 13th is the Camp Crystal Lake is a real camp. It's in New Jersey. This is the real camp. The proof is that the Jason movies take place in the New Jersey areas because ain't there a movie called, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan? Ain't Manhattan right next to New Jersey, right? Okay. This is proof that that's where those movies take place. This is where the movies took place. This is where they did the filming it. Alright? Now, obviously, it ain't no super killer soldier demon guy from, you know, the Crystal Lake. But it was a boy that was bullied there. It was a um, story, a legend that they used to tell the kids about bullying. They used to tell them, ooh, man, I'm sitting here giving away the whole story the first time I cover this. Now, see, I usually don't do that. And I ain't finna do it this time either. I ain't finna give y'all the whole story right off the rip. You're gonna have to come back and get a little bit more of that, man. Let me straighten something out. I don't do this to be going back and forth with nobody on here.
who mad at me because my page blowing up, trying to sucker me in the debates to blow your page up and all this kind of stuff. I ain't here for that. I debate you if and when I feel like it. That's how I move. And another thing, this the reason I do this. I do this for the people that grew up. That grew up, my folks grew up underrepresented in horror movies. I grew up for people that's tired of seeing all the movies take place in the suburbs. That's tired of seeing families that didn't come up like my family did. I came up on the west side of Chicago, man, playing football on vacant lots. Watching out for needles in the ground. Watching out for broken glass bottles, man, beer bottles. Grew up next to pimps and prostitutes uh, doing their thing on the same block. You can't even throw the ball down two houses because that's where the dope dealers at. Come on, man. That's who I do this for. I do this for them folks who grew up and want to see a change in the horror community. And hey, for all y'all that rock with me, man, y'all hit the like button on this one, man. And let me know, if hey, y'all, let me know if I'm spitting facts or not. Right here, you see Dennis the Pewter, man, over here. This man right here is where they got Jeepers Creepers from. Now, what he did, he killed his wife. And uh, I think he's, he might have just killed his wife. I don't know if he killed. I think it's just his wife. And he put her in a sheet. And threw her down in the hole, just like in the movie in the first Jeepers Creepers. And it was a brother and sister who drove by, and a man was driving a van. And um, it wasn't no big van, like it was like one of them conversion vans, you know, like them, like um, like Mus used to have in the hood, man, a big conversion van. He was driving like one of them vans, man. And um, when they drove by and saw him, he started chasing them. That's where they got the chase scene and junk in the movie. You remember when they drove by him in the movie and he turned and he looked at him and they saw him? Except, you know, they circled back, you know. See, in the movie, they circled back. If it was me, I ain't circling back nowhere. All right, now we finna see how many of y'all really know horror movies. What movie is this from? Now, if you really know horror movies, then you know where this is from. Now, tell me where this is from and then I'm gonna give y'all the background on it, all right? Now, what would you do in this situation, man? Imagine you move into a spot, right? Y'all done moved in and everything, man, boom. So now one day, you go down to the basement because you're like, all right, we're going to go straighten the basement up, clean it up, man, you know, get the laundry machine and all that junk going. And in the midst of doing that, you see a ball and chain, like with a little ankle thing wrapped around it, and that's down there in the basement. Now, you already know you see something like this. <laughs> they ain't have it there for no dog, all right? That mean they had a person tied up down there. Now, could you live somewhere where you know somebody been tied up in the basement? I can't do it. Because especially if they ain't caught the guy, to me, it's going to feel like the guy going to come back. And, hey, you know, hey, man, look. <laughs> you know, hey, if I got to fight, I got to fight. But I ain't trying to fight nobody that locked people in this basement, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get down with that guy, man. So, you know, some fights, you know, you just ain't trying to fight. So in this small little town, this is where the Crypt Keeper story come from. This is the real Crypt Keeper story right here. So it was a little small town. And they had a funeral home in there. Now the owner of the funeral home had a guy that was always there when the kids would call him a Crypt Keeper because he was always there, you know, working, preparing the bodies, doing all the little things, keeping the ground straight, all that. So as the town, you know how them small towns go, everybody started moving away and going out to the big cities and all that farm and all that junk going away so now it was pretty much just no one too many people left at the time so when the um funeral home guy wanted to leave he told the guy hey man you know you can watch after the place but you know i'm gonna go ahead and move on and you know i just keep the building for the time being or whatever so a couple years go by and uh he hadn't heard from the guy you know because he kind of got so busy doing other things he forgot about it so one day he kept trying to get in touch with him could never go in touch with him so then he said, this is the real story of the Crypt Keeper, man. If you want to see part one, go back a video. So the owner of the place, or the, or the funeral home, he went to go. He said, man, I might have to go check on him because he ain't picking up the phone. He tried to call the sheriff department. The sheriff department, you know, they said, oh, you know, we don't see him, man, this or that. So he went to the building, looked for the guy, couldn't find him. But he saw his car, he saw all his belongings and everything. So he was like, dang, you know, that's weird. So... And uh, they said they're going to go ahead and clean the building now. And he was just going to go ahead and put it up for sale or whatever, man. Try to go and get rid of it. And then in the midst of doing that, they go down to the basement. And they see the crib keeper down there in the basement. In a coffin. Dressed up nice and everything. And all the blood was drained out of his body. And he was just laying in the coffin. Just just perfectly still, just like that right there, man. Just like that right there. 
chilling. You know, I worried about her because, um, you know, just a little bit of time I know her, I really liked her, man. You know, back then, you know, you, you, you didn't maybe really know what love was, but a lot of times, man, you meet the right person, it just felt right, man. And, um, you know, I tried to call her. Her phone was just ranging and ranging, man. And, you know, this back in the day, we used to have, like, music playing on our, on our, um, whatever it called. She had that Keisha Cole song playing, that um, love song. Keisha, that song Keisha Cole came out with back in the day. I still remember to this day, man. And um, after a while, you know, I called her a couple of days. Her phone just started going straight to voicemail like the battery died. And, um, of course, on her profile, she, you know, she wasn't responding to no messages. She wasn't making no new posts, wasn't uploading no photos. And, um, you know, I, I, I felt bad. Like, you know, you know, my first thought was, dang, maybe she, you know, she just ain't interested in me. But after a while, I said, nah, the look in her eyes, man, the way she was looking at me, she was looking at me like, she wanted to tell me something. I didn't see it at the time, but now, you know, when I look back on it, I was like, man, you know, it was really something in her eyes. It was something she was really trying to tell me. I just wasn't wise enough to see that at the time. So a little time went by, a little time went by. And uh, every now and then, you know, when I was getting on, uh, going here on the uh, had a little free time or whatever, I'd take the bus and just go by that park, man. Just hoping I'd run into her, you know, just hoping maybe I would see her. And one day I went to the park and I sat and I just sat till it got dark. And then when it got dark, I thought I saw her. I ain't exactly sure, but I really felt like I saw her. So one of the best movies ever made in the world history was Duel, D-U-E-L, man. Now Duel is about an old truck that's chasing a guy through the mountains. Now the real movie came, the idea from this movie, like I told y'all, all these movies come from real stuff. The guy that wrote the movie was getting tailgated and harassed by a truck driver in an old truck, just like in the movie. That's where he got the idea of the movie from. And it was on the same day that JFK died. For y'all young folk that don't know no better, JFK is John F. Kennedy, the president that was assassinated back in the day. So the same day he died, this truck was tailgating him real bad. That means following up on him real close. And that's where he got the idea of the movie from because the truck tried to run him up off the road before he, um, the truck tried to run him up off the road. So, you know, he couldn't never, he was too scared to try to follow the truck. And get, plus, they had no cell phones anyway. You couldn't take no video. Up. So, if you take a group of people, who all believers in paranormal and you go into a dark house, a spooky house, a scary house and you go around the table and you all sit around the table like this, like they doing and you put your hands on the table everybody put their hands on the table everybody watch everybody everybody keep their hands there and don't take them down they say if you do it with the right people in the right place that you will conjure something up. I'm now, watching you. Uh, you realize the thing about it, though, is all these hands is white people hands. You see that? Let me get my head out the way. All these hands is white hands. Ain't no black hand mains on that thing. Look, there's certain stuff we do. Look, I got a damn a, a, a Ouija boy, Justin. My no mama said I ain't scared. She hey, look, I'm just finna give you a little tip now. This one. <laughs> Look, you better listen. If you ever see a shopping cart in the woods, like next to the woods, next to a house, an abandoned house, an abandoned building, stay away. I'm going to tell you why. Oh, you know how when you when you come home, you park your car outside the, in your driveway or whatever, right? Homeless people park their shopping cart, which is like their car, outside their house. So if you ever walk in and you and by next to the woods or something, and you see a shopping cart right there, there's a homeless person not too far from there. So you better not cut through there. If you uh, abandoned house and they got a shopping cart pulled up outside, you better stay away from there. So I'm just trying to let you know, all right, so you don't mess around. Because, look, 
I don't mind going to creepy spots. I ain't worried about the pit about no monster or nothing. I'm worried about running across old Jebediah up in this. So like I told y'all before, all these movies come from something. None of these movies is just made up stuff they just came up with off the top of their head. All these movies come from something. So here is where Candyman come from. Now for y'all know Candyman was shot in Chicago. It was a... Uh, shot in the Cabrini Green projects and Candyman was from uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of different stories they took and put into one story to do Candyman. Candyman wasn't just you know uh, it wasn't just once it was multiple stories put into one that's how a lot of these movies was Michael Myers Freddy uh, man a lot of these movies man uh, Scream all your favorite horror movies, man. Jason, it all come from multiple stories. They take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and then they, you know, put it all into one movie. That's how they do it, man. So I'm going to tell y'all the story on Candyman coming up. See, now, videos like this, man, it just really mess with me because it's like, you know, you're in another country somewhere, it's like somewhere look like South America, and then maybe Mexico, and then you got, like, a huge group of people, right? And they all fighting at this thing that look like, <laughs> like it looked like maybe a man in a robe or something. And now look, you know, like <sighs> this can't be fake, right? Cause why would they? It's what are they doing it for? Like for a movie? For you know? Now this is wife, man. This is wife. Come on! Look, look, look. Like what? Look at that. Time to get a divorce. Time to get a... Yeah. You gotta go, Susan. Come on. Yeah, so look at her. She can watch this. Look, she didn't hurt the noise, right? Now, she's gonna go play on... Um, Ghost Inspector. <laughs> Boy, I mean, man, I ain't got no weapon or nothing. What if it's a crackhead? You know, at least take your weapon. I don't know what I'm saying. I watch this. I'm so crazy. You come, you come. Alright, so look, they here, they doing somebody's birthday. Uh, of course, it's in a foreign country. And look, look at it. Look, they like it. Look at that, that, that boat back there. See, look here and now. now. Look, I don't know why they even got this recording. Well, you know, I don't know if they like knew that something been going on. Look at this. So she head up to bed, I guess, for the night or whatever. Look at that. Look at this, y'all see. See that jump? Well, I'm tell you, if I found that out now, imagine you seeing that on the camera. And you gotta go downstairs to get you a glass of uh, Kool Aid to, to tuck yourself in for the night. <laughs> Boy. Bro, somebody gotta explain why is there so many videos like this from other countries? Look at this. You see that? Why is it always like some you know, uh, Mexico or some South American country? Hey, look, look, look. Ain't nobody right there. Boy, turn the lights on. <laughs> why is your house so dark? Now he's supposed to be out camping by himself in the middle of nowhere, and then this happened. Boy, now why? I don't, I don't kind of, I kind of don't believe it. Why he wearing a mask if you camping by yourself? And what you protecting yourself from yourself? You must be sick. Now, I don't know if I'm just tripping on this, but I don't see what happened. She went and turned the light on, and then she turned it off. I ain't see nothing happen. Well, no, y'all seen something I ain't seen? Now look at it. Look at it. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Them boy just body slam them boy. He just suplex the guy. So on this one, the Yeti didn't kill this homeboy. So when they run up on him, he hit him with that thing thing and he just fell out. Man, boy, I don't know what he, look at this. Look. <laughs> You can see it push the dang dog. Wow, that's crazy, boy.
<laughs> okay, this one, man, um, like, I guess he's supposed, he's sitting at the train tracks, and that's another car on the other side of the train tracks, and he's supposed to be in sync something, but I don't, okay, okay, I think I just saw somebody get out the car, oh, wait a minute, I see it now, wait on the, what it look like a dang Bigfoot or something. Right? When, oh, okay, it just disappeared. But, what the? Look, man, somebody got to explain this. So the little boy sitting there, right? He playing with the flowers. Now you see that stuff sticking? That's like hell. Now watch this. Watch the little boy pull the hell. Look at that. Most black people turn, turn around. around. You never get to see what's on the other side. I don't care what's on the other side. Over there. Ain't no gold over there. Ain't nothing over there but pain and suffering. What's on the other side? Mm hmm Look at me. Don't get scared now. Yep. Hello? Yeah, don't get scared now. Mm -hmm. Go find your pot of gold, white boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this one, man, I don't know. It's like, you know, he down there recording. It looked like he live in a kind of, you know, you know, ain't got no neighbor. Like he got neighbors, but not like super close. And I look like a car leaving. So then he walking in the yard, walking in the yard. Going around the house and he see these three eyes there. Boy, you done brought you done brought this thing to my house. <laughs> you, catch you know, I don't know what would happen if I see this because it's like I'm a I wanna get video of it so I can go viral. But at the same time, man, like uh, that thing, you know it gotta probably be faster than you is. So you know it's really like you shouldn't you go and get out of there while And this man sitting here holding off this shark. And I tell you, man, I hit that shark and there's no dig his eyeballs out, boy. Ain't no way, man. Ooh, boy, I put that look. Boy, I hit that If you see another person that looks identical to you, run away and hide. It's one of the scariest videos ever. Step. Watch this. <laughs> Only hit, man. Look, that's some real goddamn kung fu training, boy. <laughs> Knock the ghost out. Look, did you see the? Why she gonna see the face? Look, see it. You caught that, right? Y'all seen that, right? But then, of course, there's nobody there. What's the explanation on this one? Shoot, I'll try to grab that mug, see if I can use it to power my goddamn house. So I ain't got to pee paying this high electric bill. <laughs> Shoot. I'm going to go over there and try to... You can see this at any hood in the night. 
He just going off the air run. That's all that is. There ain't nothing supernatural. <laughs> I've seen that a couple of times. So this man stuck up in a tree and a goddamn leopard or jaguar or something, man. Come up, uh, come up and, and up under him. A cheetah, I guess that is. Shit. Man, I dropped down on that Negro and we'd have been at a barbecue cheetah. Look at um, the real Rambo, the original Rambo. I don't get it, man. I'm, I'm not seeing where he sink. I still ain't caught it yet. Just... <laughs> man, I'm gonna try to grab him, dude. Ooh now look at this. This film on the worst camera ever, but. I'm telling you, man, like, that don't look like no CGI at all to me. I don't believe in aliens, but guess what? If I see one, especially a little scrawny one like that, I'm finna knock that Negro clean out. No explanation. I, I can't figure this one out at all. Look at that. That's just complete. You ever heard about the crying lady? Look, you better watch out because there's a lot of crying ladies, but there ain't nothing worse than this one. This one here, if you ever out in the, out at night, and I only in the hood now, but if you ever out at night and you come across a warehouse, an abandoned like warehouse or building or something, that's where she like to hang out at, you'll hear her crying. Now, if you one of them good Samaritan type folk, you're going to try to figure out who that is and all that. And uh, not me because... It don't matter. Yeah, I just it, it, if you're crying, then obviously something making you cry. And I ain't trying to see what it is. That's on you. You know, you should choose your situations better. But if you try to be um, a Mister Mister Detective and you go up in there and try to see what's going on, this lady here, she gonna lure you in, and she look kind of nice. You know, you know, if you like your big old girl, you know, she look kind of nice and all glistened up and Vaseline and all that stuff all on her leg. But boy, if you get anywhere up near This picture right here from a ghost hunt from a abandoned trap house. Now see what they gonna tell you. They gonna tell you that they changed and made him a white boy because they ain't wanna offend no uh, 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 Italians with no stereotypes and none of that. But that ain't true, man, because look, if um if I was Mexican or Italian and, and, and they made a Mario movie and I know Mario is either Mexican or Italian, then I'm going to be like proud. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's my kids. They got like a hero, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, I wouldn't be offended. Man, you know you can't open two boxes at the same time. Hey, girl, ain't nice. You sound like mama. Sorry, man. Ooh. Now, you know what's going to happen. You open that box of cereal. Yeah, just like mama. Go on, get on my face. I This is a possible grave of Freddy Krueger. Now, it's a few of them out there, so nobody knows which one is really the real one. But he was, um, he was real, man. You know, a lot of these movies and stuff, they don't be coming up with this junk on their own. They come up with it based off stories and stuff they done heard. You know, stuff that, um, they didn't pass. Some of the stuff that, you know, the movies is based off of is, you know, well-known, documented stuff. And some stuff be deathbed confessions. They get it and turn it into a movie. The movie The Men in Black it's just like the rest of the movies, like I be telling y'all, I came from something. The Men in Black ain't just no thing that came up with Will Smith and uh, Tommy Lee Jones. The Men in Black is a real 
group of men. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many of them it is. Nobody knows. But the men in black is men who come to you dressed in black suits. And uh, they, they, I've only seen it white people. i never seen no black people. It's always been white people all the times so I've ever seen or heard of it. Mm -hmm. But they come to you, no, no, no mustache, no beard, no eyebrows, mm -hmm. no eyelashes, just plain white pale faces mm -hmm. and they move robotic mm -hmm. they move real straight to the point mm -hmm. everything they do and now they come see you when you report that you seen mm -hmm. the alien and i guess if your report is legitimate mm -hmm. they'll come to get some information from you now i'm gonna tell you about what they do when they get there and all that coming up next back in the day some people was really terrified of ventriloquist dummies because they felt like it was real folks now here you see this dummy. I don't know what he did to get this thing to look so real. It looked real, but it looked completely fake at the same time and crazy. But apparently what he did was he took a real boy and had a real boy dress and sat this, um, like put the mask on and kind of maybe some gloves or something, I guess, to make him seem like a dummy. But it was really a boy dressed up like that. And uh, it, uh, people would freak out because at night, the kids would go to his house and try to figure out what's going on and see if they could find a dummy and steal him or mess him up or something. But they said a dummy would be walking around the house at night and all that. So that's where, like, goosebumps and stuff like that got slappy from that whole ventriloquist dummy thing and come from, you know, folk like this creepy. Did you ever realize that an original Halloween logo to hang that's holding a knife got a face up in it? This is woman she been in my dreams. Every time I go to sleep, I see her. I see her so much in my dreams, sometimes I'm starting to see her throughout the day. I never can get a good look at her, though. It's like I can tell she's beautiful, but at the same time, she look like a monster. Whenever I know she around, it's like, you know, I, I feel a, a, a feeling like a cold chill down my spine. And I know she in the in the area, but I never can tell from which way she coming. In this dream I have about her, she get closer and closer. Last night she came through the door and came right up to my bed. And I feel like if I go sleep tonight, I might not wake up. Hey, if you're looking for a good horror movie, I just seen this movie called Barbarian. It's on, um, but look, I got the hook up there. <laughs> so, um, I think it's on HBO Go, HBO, whatever it's called. The purple HBO thing that all the DC movies on. But man, this thing was good, man. The main character is a black lady. And they had the boy in it from, um, who played it. The one that played Pennywise, uh, some Skarsgård, Bill Skarsgård, I think. Then it had, um, uh, the boy. Can't never, man, what's it? I just saw his dang name, but Justin Long, I think. He played, um, in Jeepers Creepers, he played the brother in the first movie. So, yeah, it was a pretty good movie, man. Um, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen a good horror movie. Like, this is a good one, man. This one that you, you might not be able to watch by yourself, man. I don't think I could have watched this one by myself, man. Maybe broad daylight, but nah, not at night, man. Uh, this was a good one, man. So, yeah, y'all check that out. But you know what? Let me tell you why it was good. It was good because the movie, it, it didn't try to do too, too much. And it put it in a good setting. And uh, the only thing that hurt it, though, you know, it's, you know, you got to look past the. I guess when it comes to horror, you just got to look past the main character, a black woman. But she investigating that junk. So I guess if you're going to look past the investigating junk <laughs> it's a good movie man but uh it's pretty good man it's better than a lot of this other trash that be out there now the men in black is a is is real so the movie got the men in black from the real thing the real thing is when you say you sent the alien and i guess for whatever reason they believe you so they know you telling the truth they send the men in black now in the movies the men in black erase your memory with a magic pen these men in black change or uh, remove your memory by either beating the dog mess out you or scaring you so bad you know better than to ever open your mouth again. This one guy, he made a report and they told him, they called him on the phone, they said, hey, we want to have a meeting with you. 
So he say, cool, all right, we can have a meet. What time? They say, okay, we on the way. So he leave from upstairs to go downstairs, and he see them coming upstairs in his house. So imagine that when you leaving from upstairs, you see them coming upstairs looking just like this, pale face, plain, no hair, and they go up there and talk to him. And after that, that man shut his mouth up real good. Boy, I would have. Let's see who the real horror fans is. What horror movie was filmed on top of an Indian burial ground? This is a story about why I never played church. Um, I was a, I had to be about eight, nine years old when my grandmother first told my cousins and I about the story when she was playing church. Now, we live in South Florida. I live in Miami. I was born here. My grandmother was born in the next county over in Broward, which is like literally like five minutes away. But where she lived... It wasn't developed yet. This was like in the 50s, I want to say. And um, it was very country before it turned, you know, like a city. And um, she said it was her, her other sisters and brothers. It was about eight of them in total, but not all of them were there. They were in like this rickety shack, like the walls was missing, the roof was missing, but it had like a couple of seats and a bench. And this had to be, she said, around like eight o'clock at night. They were supposed to be home, but they out playing church. She said her baby sister act like she had the Holy Ghost. She falling all on the ground rolling. Her brother, he's playing the pastor. They playing like they in the choir and they singing and carrying on. So they say they look out in the distance. They hear a, like a deep laughter, sound like a monster. So she said her sisters and they, her brother, they looked up in the distance riding through the trees. Now this is a country. All you see is the moonlight, the stars, and they got like a fire lantern with them. And they see this 10 foot tall devil. She said the man had horns and he like riding on his biggest horse that you ever seen with a carriage, a buggy attached to it, pulling them. He whipping the hell out of it. She said his teeth was like red. It was sharp like vampire teeth. And she said she looked at them to make sure they were seeing the same thing. Cause my grandmother had always been able to see the supernatural since she was little. And they looking too scared as hell because they see it too. He laughing, whipping the horses, and he coming, he coming. She said they got up out of there. They start running as fast as you can. And she said that thing ran them all the way home. And they looking back. Every time they looking back, he's still behind him. He's still behind him. So finally they get to the house, and it just disappeared. And she was like, they'll, they said they'll never do that again. And... From my understanding, they never talked about it. And when we was little, we was like, what the heck? My grandma always had the craziest stories. And that just added to the list. Not My grandmother's not known to be a liar or anything, so we didn't think she was lying. We just was like, wow, grandma lived in the country. She saw some crazy things. So my cousin, fast forward to like 20-something years later, now, she said a few years ago, she was with my grandma, and they, she went to her sister's house. And my grandma's sister brought up, Mother, you don't remember that time that demon devil was chasing us? And she said my grandma looked at her with, like, terror in her eyes, like, I still dream about that to this day. And my cousin was like, oh, my God. So it's actually true. And they started talking about it, going into details. And I was just like, whoa. It's another one to add to the list of crazy things that my grandma have seen and witnessed in her lifetime. This is a Russian experiment done by putting babies outside in hopes of trying to build up their immune system. There's also another study that was done on children back in the day where mothers wasn't like holding the babies. They had the babies and they would raise them up, feed them and stuff, but they wouldn't play with them, wouldn't really interact with them, wouldn't care for them. So imagine that the, how those babies grew up in society. Now, if you ain't had no kids, you don't know this, but in order for a kid to grow, they have to be nurtured, man. They have to have loving interactions if you want them to grow up and be decent. And when you play with them, and you play with their mind and emotions and by treating them like, you know, tossing them off like they just, you know, a, a rock or something, you know, it's hard to even put it in words, man. But when you do that to them, you're messing them up for life. One of the scariest ghost stories in Mississippi is the one about the three-legged lady. She haunts Nash Road right around the Columbus area, not too far from where my family come from. If you want to see her, all you got to do is go out to Nash at nighttime. And when you get to the road, turn your headlights off. 
and honk your horn three times letting her know to come out. And when she do, she gonna knock on the roof of your car. Then she gonna chase you down the road, slamming her body into your car the whole time. Now it's scary enough being chased by a ghost, but being chased by a ghost with three legs, one of them being all rotten and sewn onto her body, is beyond creepy. Let me know if y'all want to know where that third leg came from. Once again, I told y'all, stop playing with me, man. Don't nobody know these movies like me. All these folk make videos and junk, talking junk. But you don't come in here. When I show you the facts, you don't come in here and say I'm sorry and apologize. I've been telling y'all since I started, they stealing all these characters from real stuff. And a lot of stuff is stolen from black culture. Pinhead was stolen from black culture. They took them from voodoo dolls. You see the bald heads? You see the nails in the head, the nails in the face? They didn't come up with this on their own. They stole Pinhead. A lot of this voodoo stuff you see in the movies, man, where you think it don't come from the European culture. It come from the black culture. African and Haitian and Jamaican. It come from those cultures, man. It don't come from American culture. America ain't that. They get these horror movie ideas from voodoo culture and they just switch it up and put white people. In the movie Poltergeist, they use uh, real humans in the pool scene. It's the scene where like the bodies coming up through the water and they use real skeletons and stuff in this scene, man. And also the movie was filmed over an Indian burial ground. So like the Poltergeist movie is one of the most cursed movies ever, man. A lot of the Cast and stuff died. A lot of people had a lot of crazy stuff happen to them because of what they did to to make this movie real. Now they say the actors and stuff didn't know that uh, the stuff was real, and uh, you know maybe possible, but you gotta think that stuff got a stink or smell funny or something. <laughs> like I think you'll know the difference between the real de decomposed body than the. Um, than like a, a plastic prop, man. But, you know, either way, uh, yeah, that's some crazy junk. Yeah, so what happened is the guy, he slashed his friend's face while they were asleep. They had been drinking the junk, so he waited for him to go to sleep because he felt like he wanted to do it. When Freddy did it in the movies, he got people when they were asleep. So his boy went to sleep and um and cut his face, and the guy woke up, and they fought for about 10 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, the guy kind of finally snapped out of it. They say he had just watched the Nightmare on Elm Street movies like 20 times, like a couple days before this happened. So he was crazy, crazy. Then, um, you know, after the fight, man, the police and all that junk came in. He called the police himself, actually. And um, he turned himself in, told him he didn't know what happened. And they said he had made like four of these gloves since like 1980. And uh, he facing life in prison. This been this old though. This happened like back in 07, I think. So I don't know what happened with him because I couldn't find no updated thing on him. If you out late at night, especially if you by yourself, stay in the light. Stay in the light. Stay where somebody can hear you scream. Because if you end up in the dark, you might not make it back to the light again. In the alleys, the unlucky folks done created unsafe havens where they can do their dope and sleep. But they never know if they gonna make it through the night. Because he out here, picking and choosing victims, deciding who would never see another day. They call him the organ donor. See, when rich folks need organs, no matter if it's to save their life or just to experiment on some kind of science project or something, you know, they don't get in line and wait for the organs like everybody else do. They skip the line like they always do. And they send him out to keep their freezers full. Now, of course, the homeless people is easy to target. A lot of them ain't got no family, no job, you know, nobody care about even looking for them. A lot of them ain't even got an ID card. 
Do you know how much organs is worth? How much would you pay for a heart if you needed one to save your life? Or your spouse's life? Or your kid's life? So, back in the 18 and uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, even in the mid-1900s, the best job that a black woman could hope to get most of the time was a maid for a, a wealthy white family. You know, my great-grandmama, my great-great-grandmama did the same thing. You know, I heard a story of how, you know, she would go and sometimes she would take my great-grandma and she was just a kid, but she would help out. And uh, that's the most that, you know, black woman could hope for in many places. Now, it was as time went on, of course, things got better, man. But back in the day, they weren't trying to hear it, man. You know, they had to work hard for it. That's I think that's kind of why black women go to college so much now and be so successful, man. I guess it's just like something ingrained in their DNA that, like, I couldn't do it. But now that I can do it, I'm finna do it. But them dang black women don't mess around. So this lady here, Miss Chong Ha, she was one of the biggest bootleggers back in the day. Now, for y'all that don't know, back in the early 1920s to 1933, America went through prohibition where they outlawed the sale of alcohol because they figured it would make the country better, you know, less drunk folk walking around. Like, they even figured people hygiene would be better, it'd be less crime. Less crime, that mean less taxpayers paying money for the... Uh, for jails and all that kind of stuff. So this lady here, she was um, an immigrant from China, but man, she was one of the biggest bootleggers it was. A lot of people from um, from other countries, you know, a lot of uh, uh, minority people had to resort to crime because they weren't finna get no job other than the worst thing you could think of. And then especially her being a woman too, she had to raise five kids because her husband died. And she was buying her kids new cars and all that bootlegging selling that looking this little boy was born in 1783 he was born with a second head attached upside down to his regular head with the neck point straight up it was said that the second head would mumble and say little things to the boy from time to time and even at night you could see him sleep and as he slept the second head would just be looking around the room when he ate the second head would even water at the mouth knowing that they was receiving something to eat. His parents, you know, back in these days, anything, any, just the slightest deformity would make you an outcast. So his parents tried to get rid of him by throwing him into a fire, but he survived. He survived and came back and ended up dying from a snake bite at four years old. Now, you can't tell me his name will show he up off of one of his catchphrases, then you ain't invited to Thanksgiving this year. Hey, real talk, who you think will win in a fight? Jason Voorhees, an undead zombie, or a black mama cleaning up on a Saturday morning? Mad at the world, who playing gospel music full blast. Yeah, it'll be the best CGI I ever sent, man. I ain't never sent nothing like I just sent right here. I'm telling you, this is crazy, man. This is crazy, I don't know what to say, man. This can't be real. This is Josephine Myrtle Corbett. She was born with two sets of legs and was one of the fastest women's to ever walk the earthesis. So it's a spot in the woods not too far from where I stay. And if you go out there at a certain time, man, you will hear this name, uh, freaking like dog man or some kind of thing out there, man. If I go out there, y'all gonna watch because I ain't going if y'all not gonna watch. So one thing in my life that happened that I just can't explain, I'm talking about no matter which way I try to, it's just, I try to, I try to mix it, flip it, twist it. <laughs> no matter what I do, I just can't find out like, a good way to explain this thing, man. But, um, so one time I was outside, it's like maybe three in the morning, two, three, one, two, three, somewhere around that time, right? And I'm out there with my boss because we was doing a job and he dropped me off. We were doing electrical work. So he dropped me off and we in the driveway just talking and junk, you know, yeah, yeah, planning on my next day, whatever. So while we doing that, all of a sudden out of nowhere, this sound come and it's a sound that sound like it's coming from everywhere like it was to me it sounded like an electrical sound like a like a big engine or something powering up and it was going and and i was just like and me and him to stop talking we started looking around now we outside as atlanta 
in the suburbs. Now, so um, in, the, in my neighborhood where I lived at that time, man, um, we didn't have no generator. My neighbors ain't had no generator. Ain't nobody had no dang semi truck or nothing like, you know, nobody. It was only only it was only one, two, three, four, five. It's only six, seven. It's only seven houses on the block. At that time, it was only seven houses on the block. All right. So after seven houses in a block, ain't nobody, you know, nah, trust me. Look, not in that neighborhood at that time. There wasn't nobody powering nothing up. And he said it sounded like a chant to him. He said it sounded like some kind of chant. Now, I guess I don't know if it sounded different to different people. I don't know what it was. But, man, that night, it was something in the air above us that was hovering. And it was powerful. And it was real close. Now, that's all I can say, man. It wasn't, yeah, planes go by. But planes be way up there. You know when you hear a plane. We close to the airport, but... Right, we close to the airport, but this was close, you know, because it's something we never heard that close before. And um, I never heard it again. You know, nobody else in the family heard it. It was just me. And um, I ain't got no explanation to this day. Get, uh-uh, come over here. Come on. Talk to my wife. Nah, come on over here now. But, uh, yeah, uh, come on, sit with me. But, yeah, uh, what am I talking about? I don't forget what I got dang talking about now. But yeah, yeah, that's the one that's, that's one of the things that to happen that I just ain't got no explanation. So this is an old man home. This is basement. Now when he died, his grandson and uh, grandkids and all that junk, they went down, you know, cleaned the house out and junk. So when they got to the basement, they seen their granddaddy head up, just uh, hundreds of dolls just hanging from the ceiling and uh, half naked and and, and then I look like all black dolls from, I mean, all white dolls, like, you know, glad it wasn't, I'm actually glad it wasn't no black dolls, like, leave us out of this, man, this is, this is, y'all, this is y'all situation, all right, leave us up out of it, but yeah, um, can you imagine that funeral, like, once you get to see something like this, the, at the funeral, do you, like, you can't just sit there and, like, somebody got to say something. Because when the preacher go up there and say, Granddaddy was a good man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Shoot. You know, man, some stuff, you know, you just got to keep it real. Class Barker in the interview line talking about where he got hair raised from. I, I always wanted to know, where did the, where did the pain come from? A dream. A lot of things come in dreams. I keep um, a, a dream journal. I keep a... Um, a, a pad beside my bed in which I write down, you know, images which appear in my dreams, and um, 90%, no, 98% of them end up being discarded, but 2% of them end up being things I put in books or in movies. And Pinhead was somebody who came in dream form. Yeah. The exact same shape and the whole everything. Pretty much. I actually, I actually did a drawing of it, um, which is very accurately what what appears in the movie. Yeah, yeah. A pleasure. The reason I do what I do is because these people steal folks' ideas, steal stuff from real life. Then they turn around and act like it's their natural, made-up idea. And even sometimes they steal stuff from black folks. A lot of times they steal stuff from black folks and black voodoo culture, black, scary, creepy culture, and then turn around and make money off of it and don't never give us the props off of it. Now, for y'all that don't know, the projects was these big, massive apartment buildings that was in major cities, places like Chicago, New York. They had these massive buildings that are like, you know, 100 units in them or more, and this is where, you know, all people who didn't have a lot of money would stay. Now, originally, they was built to um, be like a, like the next big promising community, but you know the government just built them to get everybody in there, and then once they got in there, it's like you know just lock them in there, they gone, and no more resources, cut them off, right? Get them in there, cut them off, let them fend for themselves. But anyway, um, so of course it's places like this where you got a whole bunch of people who struggling. There's gonna be a lot of crime going on because people gonna turn to crime to either help them get through the day. Or to help them make some money to pay some bills, you know. Either way, it's gonna be a lot of folk resorting to crime. 
But now the worst, one of the worst things that was in there was a hit squad. Now it's two, it's two stories on the hit squad. Now the first story is that they was working for the government, and what they do, they catch folk out at night. And if you get caught out at night, the government will basically send these folks to grab you, throw you in a van, and carry you off somewhere. Now most of the time, the people they carrying off was homeless people, and uh, you know, so you can mess with. So, you know, nobody's going to report you missing. <laughs> All right, another homeless person not going to go say, hey, I ain't seen no Jim down the street. Let me go make a report. No, you just going to assume that Jim went on to the next town and went down to another neighborhood. You know, you're not going to, that's just where I go, you know. And um, plus police ain't going to believe a homeless person anyway. They walk in there, they're going to cry risk them get in jail themselves. <laughs> so... And plus, people in the city mind their business, for one thing, man. You know, to another thing, man, folk keep their damn mouth shut in the city. Now, the second story behind this hit squad was that they was put there to scare, like, uh, help away police. Like, it would be stories of police getting shot at. Like, they even showed this in a movie, New Jersey Drive. They were standing on the roof of the projects. And the police car drove by, he had a revolver, man, and he just started firing at the police car. So a lot of times you would hear stories about snipers in the projects, man. So the, supposedly the hit squad was made to scare away um, public service people, uh, social workers, police, even paramedics, firemen, they was called. They said the, the people would scare them away. So, you know, either way it goes, I guess, the projects was just you know, had this evil group working inside. This one right here ain't easy to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it. Um, The government supposedly drops off crates of guns in the hood. So cities, big cities, man, where you have a lot of gang violence and stuff at, going back to back in the day, supposedly the government comes and drop off this stuff right there in the hood, man. Now, we talking about, you know, we talking about pistols, we talking about Uzis, we talking about AKs, we talking about ARs, you know, we talking about, you know, big heavy machine guns. Now, you know, because if you look at it, man, where are these gangsters getting this stuff from? You know, where is these gangsters getting AKs and all this junk from? No gun license, you know, a lot of them ain't got IDs and stuff. And they show if they buy an AK, like... You can't get, just go buy an AK because they're going to trace it to you, you know, and, and it's going to draw, it's going to draw what you call, you know, it's going to draw attention on you anyway. If you go in there and buy five, six, seven, eight AKs now, if, maybe a white boy can go and do it, but you from Chicago and it, you just, it's not going to be easy, right? So where they getting these guns from? Excuse me, where they getting these guns from? Huh? Where, so... What happens is when the government make their raids, and of course the government own, of course the government got guns. And when they take guns out of uh, decommission them and all that stuff, because you know, a gun have this time and then they supposed to, you know, get rid of it, man. But instead of getting rid of it, what you think they doing with it? Go give it in the hood. Now, people gonna ask, why would they do this, right? Folk gonna ask, how come? Why would they do something like that? That's, that's crazy. Government evil, man. It's common sense. Government evil. It ain't no, ain't nothing mystical or twistical about it, man. The government is evil. And they need violence to go on. They need violence to make people feel unsafe. You make people feel unsafe, people will pay. People will go out and vote. People will march. They will do whatever they need to do to feel safe. So, you get these folk feeling unsafe. How much y'all willing to pay to feel safe again? How much money y'all willing to donate to this campaign, that campaign, to this program? How many tax dollars y'all willing to invest in this and invest in that? They got them. And then they got to keep um, and they got to keep us. They got to keep us fighting with each other. They want us to be strapped up. You know, that's why, you know, that's why I don't really be messing with YouTube no more. Because YouTube would flag me for telling a scary story. But then you got a guy with a video with guns and, and all this stuff in it. YouTube ain't got no problem with it. With twerking and, and all this kind of crazy stuff in it. YouTube ain't got no problem with it. And it's for educational purposes. I ain't TikTok. This is educational and informative. And, and, and So look, back in the day, man, all of a sudden, 
uh, drugs hit the streets. Now, for y'all that don't know, man, uh, the coca plants and all that stuff, man, they, they get cocaine from and all these, man, look, they don't grow it here in the hood. <laughs> Ain't nobody in the hood got a farm growing now. They might be growing marijuana these days, but that's different. But back in the day, they weren't growing this stuff. It was being shipped in. Now, it was being shipped in, and in some cases, it was being dropped off in the streets. It was being dropped off in the streets so folks could come could come addicted to it. So you'll see like this, man, it'd be a big box to show up in the middle of the alley somewhere. And then Muzz get to looking around, investigating, and there was a lot of people who was getting strung out on drugs in the military. So they come back, and they'd know about it, said, man, before you know it, People getting strung out, they won't mow, they won't mow. Now they won't mow, and they go through anything to get it. But we ain't got no boats. We ain't had no boats. We might have them now, but we ain't had no boats and planes back then. So how was this stuff getting to the hood? Who was bringing it in? It wasn't us. Now we might have been doing the selling on the block, but we weren't the ones bringing it in. It was being brought in by some very powerful people to make some good money off of. Now, they was dropping it off in the hood. People was getting addicted to it. People were selling, because you even had like the Black Panthers, right? And the other street gangs and stuff from back in the day. Yeah, they might have roughed somebody up a little bit, but they was really there to help the community, protect the community from the police and from the mafia and all this kind of stuff, right? But then, these drugs got introduced. Now, even the mafia was like, bro, look, man, with the mafia, they, man, if they found out you was messing with the drugs, them OGs in the mafia would blow your dang head off. But the young guys, in the, you know, the young guys, and the same thing with the gangs, man, the street gang, they was like, man, hey, look, it's easy for the big, for the big dog to say that, because he make, we all bringing him a portion of the money we make every week. But while we bringing him a portion, we starving. But we got to pay our dues to him. So they going to do what they got to do to make as much money as they can make. So this, when the drugs came, everything got out of hand. And that's when everything got, you know, gang life always was cutthroat. But that's when, when all the rules went out the window, man. Now it was about, I'm going to get as much as I can get. And I'll sell to my own mama if I got to. I'll sell to my own grandma. Mugs, man, <laughs> like, drugs changed the whole game, man. Because it's easy, you know, when you was just after money, you might do a little crooked thing here or there. Man, but when you got that drugs messing your mind up too, on top of already being money hungry, man, you'll do anything, man. People sell their own children. Hey, now I had an ex-girlfriend. She was a witch, man. I'm talking about <laughs> that girl was a witch, boy. She, she, man, look, she had a spell on me too, boy. I ain't gonna lie to you, man, but I had to go ahead and leave her alone, man, because I knew, I seen she was into some creepy junk, man. But, um, she told me these plants here, they call snapdragon pods and snapdragon seed pods, something like that. And, um, like they would, they would grow as a plant, but after like they die, they would, you give them to somebody and when you give them to them, they real pretty. But when they die, they basically turn into little skeleton heads. Like, look at the, see what I'm talking about? Like, basically they turn into like little skeleton heads when it's done. So it's like you started off giving them something beautiful. Then this junk turned into something terrifying. See, look. Yeah, that's what that junk looked like up close, man. So that was like some little thing they did that is a, a mess with folk. Like it started off all good and pretty, but then it turned bad. So it's like Black Friday coming up. And Black Friday got some deep, dark origins to it. So the original Black Friday was a day when slaves went on sale. Now today, Black Friday is a day crockpots and, and TVs and junk go on sale with... Back in the day, it was the day that all the slaves went on a special sale. Now, for y'all that don't know, the slave trade was brutal. It was where husbands and wives was ripped apart, and uh, children was ripped from their mama's crying arms. So, on Black Friday, I, you know, I don't get into all that, man, because, uh, you know, for one, I'm, I'm not just going to shop because somebody want me to shop. It's like they making a day for you to go spend money, but... You know, if you want to, whatever, man, but just know the history of it. So some years ago, they had a secret meeting. And at this secret meeting, everybody had to sign a non-disclosure thing. You know, one of them things where whatever you see, you had to keep to yourself. And when they had this meeting, they had all the record executives there, all the big 
you know, record label people there. And they told these people, hey, we need you to keep pushing these rappers, these gangster rappers, these trap rappers. You know, we need to keep um, keep this up now. We don't need no more of these Lupe fiascos and, and back in the day, the Queen Latifahs and the public enemies and the KRS-1s and, and the commons. And, you know, we don't need that kind of stuff no more. We don't even need the nonsense too much no more. We need these trap rappers. We need these gangster rappers. Now, the reason being is because record companies have stock in private prisons. And this stock they got in private prisons, you know, private prisons is owned by, you know, private people, not federal government. So when they own these prisons, they get paid the more people they have in them. So to keep these people in these prisons, they need a culture that that we're, we're going to jail is just part of the norm. You know, it's just an everyday thing. You know, the folks who are in and out of jail who live that street life, they come and do 30 days, 90 days. You know, they just, just part of life, man. It ain't, you know, it ain't no... They don't look at it the way some folk do, man. So the music industry is an easy way. It's just a billboard. It's an easy way to suck these young folks in to make them try to portray the stuff they hear in the music, thinking that it's cool, and end up in jail. Now, Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, he the one who, you know, a lot of people didn't talk about it. He probably was the most famous person to talk about it first, at least. And uh, so, you know, you can go see the whole story from him. But, uh, man, I tell you, this is why I don't listen to rap music no more. You know, I might listen from time to time, man, some older stuff, some Parker, some DMX or some Nas or something, some Lupe or something, man. But um, all this new stuff, I don't get down with it because, um, hey, man, don't get fooled, bro. These boys ain't got no power. They is pawns, man. They do not have no power. They got people that work behind them. They got all the power. And those people behind them tell them how to dress. They tell them what tattoos to get. They tell them what music what kind of music to make, what kind of clothes to wear, what kind of car to drive, what kind of liquor to drink, even what kind of weed to smoke, man. This, um, these folk ain't got no power, all right? So, you know, that's why I don't get down with it because I'm not finna let these culture vultures, other people come in and steal our culture and then turn around and pimp it out and destroy it and turn it into something to just hurt the kids instead of something to make them kids better. <sighs> So, um, old Sleepy Joe said that he was going to eliminate private prisons, but, you know, private prisons is finding loopholes in the law and stuff in order to stay open, and, um, you ain't been hearing a lot else about it, so I'm pretty sure it's just like, you know, one of the things folks say in, um, during while they running to, you know, get people votes and all that junk, but, um, the reason why private prisons is so bad before anybody getting their feelings is because there's reports there's even convictions of judges uh, purposely sentencing people extremely harsh. Now, the reason they're doing this is because the private prisons, they for-profit prisons, all right? They making money off the prisons. They make money off the prisoners. So by them making money off the prisoners, if a judge is giving out extra years, that's extra money. So judge was being extra harsh in all these crimes. Now, of course, who you think they doing this to? Do you think they doing it to folk who look like me or folk who look like Joe? <laughs> they doing it to folk who look like me, all right? So the folk who look like me getting extra years on top of years on top of years just so they can be in prison for longer, all right? Because So they can become more institutionalized. So they can, you know, just... Like, bro, the longer you're in prison, the worse you get. The more institutionalized you get, the more, the more dangers around you, the more you just give up, the more you give up hope. To, it's just like, you know, you, you end up getting a lot of people end up going to jail for, they might be going for two or three years and end up doing 20 because you the stuff you do while you in there. So, not only uh, did the Clintons, uh, institute the dang three strikes you out where people, you know, just now getting out of jail for stuff they did during the 90s, you know, some weed and all that stuff, or, you know, little petty crimes like that. They, um, you know, they shouldn't, uh, bro, like, man, look, reading between the lines, man, all right? 
I don't just take what these folks say and run with it. I look at how, what you're going to do to help, you know, my people. But if young boys getting locked up and getting extra time, um, just so these prisons can stay full, and that's what see is pro- things different bro because the way we've been doing this thing is too you know is we gotta start thinking man we keep getting these boys keep getting locked up so folks are tired of getting locked up we gotta do it like this now. Hey, man i'm rocking with you i'm gonna go get the money right now yeah. <coughs> man i wish you Don't sell the drugs over here. Yeah. You hear me? I'm with you, bro. My clear. I'm with you, clear, bro. Clear, clear. Stand up, give me them pills. I don't even know what. Hold on, bro. <coughs> hey, big dog. Hey, oh. Hey, big dog. Hey, man. Throw your gun there, huh? But who brought what, man? Get up, big dog. Crazy, man. Who was what the what was that, man? I don't know who that was, but we gotta find out who that was. Hey, Zay. Give me the phone, man. Let me tell you something. Hello? I want every black man you got to come with the gun. I want every single one. I don't care what a nigga doing. LA one of them, Zay. It's over when they made the start of the war, huh? Somebody on camera behind. And laid us out like two big days. Now, you watch a lot of movies and read a lot of books and junk. It make it look like, you know, slaves just gave in to master ways until, you know, until the emancipation thing. It make it seem like black folks just did all master chores and just said, who one day we's gonna be free. But that ain't all the way true. There was a whole lot of cases of black folk that fought back and just wasn't going. There was even some brothers that was part of secret like society of like black slave hitmen, right? Who they job was to get back at white folks for what they was doing to black folks. And um, it's a it's a name to, I ain't gonna say too much cause it's the name of the group. I ain't gonna say the name and stuff, but the group existed and might still exist in modern history. I ain't gonna tell you how modern, but this group go out and get revenge for what's been done to black people. So in the hood, it's this monster called the kid. Now what the kid do is hide out in the alleys. Now you'll hear like a little kid crying, asking for help, you know, just, just like that, right? Saying, calling for mommy. So when you hear this, of course, you know, if you're a decent human being, you're going to get, you know, try to investigate, see what's going on. It could be a little kid in trouble. Lost. So what the kid do is the kid wait until you get, you know, close, and when you get close, it reach out for you. Now, it's called the kid, because it is small, like a kid, but that's because it's cut in half. So it was like, a, you know, it's a, it's a reason why it cut in half, but the kid um try to draw you in, and when you get close, they jump out and grab <laughs> So if you ever in the alley, and you hear a little kid crying out, hollering out, you know, I ain't saying don't go help, you know, try to help, but at the same time, you know, say, hey, show yourself, kid. 
Now, if you're a 90s baby or the parent of a 90s baby, you'll remember the show Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Now, on the show, it's about three little white boys who didn't have no parents around, never went to school or nothing, and they was just running around doing whatever they could to get some jawbreakers. So now in the show, it's an episode where the three of them is old, and they playing cards, and, uh, you know, just kicking and having a good time. Now, what this episode really is representing is that the whole show was just them reminiscing on the past so maybe some of the stuff happened maybe some of the stuff is just the way they remember it maybe some of the stuff is just the outright lie but the whole show is just them remembering the past and it's kind of creepy man because it's like you know you watching this stuff all this time and it's like it's kind of sad man to think like you know because you get attached to the characters and this whole time you really just they some soggy old men telling stories so it's so real that it's so, you know, one of the things that really helped my channel blow up is when I started showing y'all how everything, like, people don't just make this stuff and, and just be making all whatever come to their head. This is there's reasons and, and thought behind it. So with Scooby-Doo, the thought behind this show was the story of Scooby-Doo, because they never explain to you what the story is. They never explain to you how they just free roaming the, the whole world, <laughs> the whole country just free roaming with you know no cares in the world just the whole story right here freddie was selected now this during the show popped off when vietnam was at its worst freddie was drafted so freddie got on the run because he didn't want to go because you know freddie a nice guy he want to help people freddie ain't necessarily trying to kill nobody help man so freddie he dodged the draft now when he was dodging the draft he took daphne with him because daphne is rich so Daphne funded them traveling across the country and Velma is a revolutionist you know Velma a revolutionary she ain't with all that you know war stuff and Shaggy just a stoner so <laughs> Shaggy he just rolling with whatever man you know he ain't trying to work and stuff if he can just travel the country and get high that's cool now Scooby of course he just a dog so he just following what's going on so that's the true story they was on their way to Canada because they wouldn't have to, you know, once you get to Canada, you cool or whatever. So they on their way up to Canada, and along the way, they just happen to run into a whole bunch of creepy guys trying to scare folks off their land so they could, you know, take the treasure that's buried under the house. So back in the day, man, when it got real hot, man, um, you know, they didn't have um, air conditioning and junk. And some people might not even have fans, man, back in the day. So what they did is they created a cage that you could sit your baby in. So they could cool down. <laughs> now, um, you know, man, like, I don't know how high this lady is on this picture. The ground might be right there under her. But the idea of putting your baby in a cage, and, that, and I know it's bolted, I know, but man, I, I there's no way I can do that. <laughs> man, I just, whew, I don't know. I, I just, whew, I don't know. But, you know, like I said, we a lot softer now. <laughs> man, you know. We were a lot softer. Back in the day when baby had pain, they give him a little shot of Hennessy, little rub little gin on their tooth or whatever, be done with. Yeah, hey, man, it is even crazy that doctors used to recommend, you know, smoking to parents who was mothers that was in stress, man, you know. So. All right, so we in trouble, man. They say that um, now parents can go. And of course, you know, you're talking about rich folk now. They ain't talking about just, uh, they ain't talking about uh, Dre Twan and uh, Shaniqua, uh, no, Dre Quan and Sequoia. <laughs> they talking about, they talking about uh, 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 Braxton and um, and uh, what's a what's a what's a smart white girl name? Um, what is white girl names? Because white girls don't be named Susan, but at the same time, it's like what the heck is white girl's name? Not nah, anyway. So. You know, they talking about Braxton and his his children, not uh, not Dre Chuan. But you can go and buy you a baby now. You know how they had the build a bell workshop? Now they got the build a baby workshop. So they take a little incubator thing, like a little womb. They make up a, a womb. And then you put the baby in there, like the cells or whatever in there, and they grow you a baby. And you pay for it, and... um you, you, they say you can tell them how strong you want the baby to be, which I don't understand why anybody would put anything less than max. <laughs> like, if you gonna, if I'm gonna have a baby made, I'm gonna put max strength. You know, like, so I guess it's like a video game, how you create a player, 
you can go and just create you a baby now, man. Go in there and put all the stats up to max, brain power and all that. Max. But it's pretty got I hope that it's some kind of balance system. Like if you take max strength, you can't get max brain power. You know, you can't have uh you can't have it both ways, you know. It's, it's like you gotta have one or the other, man. God dang, you know, you can't just go out here and make no super baby. So yeah, man, this is what's going on now. So as the years go on, if you just start seeing people just 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 breaking the laws of, of physics and stuff. This is why. Or if you ever just walking down the street and you see somebody just melt into a a puddle of, of juice, then that's probably because they was one of the clone babies, and eventually they jump. Eventually, it's gonna break down. All right, <laughs> like they gonna break down, man. Eventually. Now, for y'all younger folk who might not know, but it was a movie called Demolition Man with Wesley Snipes and um, Sylvester Stallone, man. And in Demolition Man, they froze him and sent him to the future and put up for they froze him for and put like in prison instead of going to jail, they would freeze you. And they woke him back up in the future. And when they woke him back up, the world was all changed and the world was all soft and peaceful. So. Stallone and his lady wanted to make relations, man. So they put, she put this headset on and stuff, and she got all into it. And Stallone was like, man, what the heck is this? He like, why we can't just can't do what we always did? And she was like, ugh, that's unsanitary. Like, ugh, that's nasty. So now they got these, this head, this virtual thing that hooked to the nervous system in your body. And it's making a sense of a kiss and all this stuff, kiss hugs. All that you can feel it in there. So they just taking the stuff that they put in movies, man, is starting to come to real life. But, uh, you know, that's crazy, man. So back in the 1930s, the women had this thing. Let me turn my light on, man, so you can see me good. The women had this thing talk called the, uh, the uh, dimple maker. So look, you know, back in the day, I guess they thought dimples was cute. You know, that's all you need to get you a good man back then was some dimples and keeping your mouth shut. But nowadays, you know, it's going to take a whole lot more than some dimples. <laughs> so now, so, you know, this is for all the old folk that be saying, you know, back then right we ain't have all them big fake double booties. And yeah, I might not have big fake double booties, but y'all have fake dimples, you know. So, you know, all this stuff, man, ain't nothing new, man. Folk been doing stuff to alter themselves. Just, you know, probably it was a lot more safer getting dimples than uh, getting a big double concrete booty. But uh, hey, man, you know. It is what it is, man. And, uh, me, myself, you know, I'm all natural. <laughs> I just found out that a friend from um, from grammar school died. I grew up in Chicago and uh, on the west side. And one of my friends from grammar school, we met in seventh grade. He stayed next door to my best friend. And uh, we became best friends. I had a few, you know, guys I was real close to, like four five and he was one of the five and um uh, it really hurt man it really it's really it's just you know i don't know all the details yet but it really hurt man i guess what really hurt so much about it because it's like you know i'm staying i'm down here in the country man and you know i'm living here, i got my wife and kids and another kid on the way and it's like you know everything good man you know everything ain't good compared to some people but you know for for somebody that come from where I come from, I guess everything ain't good, man. And uh, while I'm, you know, sitting up here just, you know, there, you know, I got friends who just, who just ain't got it so good, I guess. And the worst part about it, you know, it's like, I don't know how, I'm assuming that, you know, he, he might've got shot. And it's whatever it is, you know, especially if he did get shot, it's like, you know, just you gotta think about them last moments of his life. You know, was he was he by himself? You know, was people he cared about around, you know, the thoughts that went through his head. And you know, I done prayed before, but you know, you don't really man, like, yeah, we done prayed, but man, I tell you, you got your life on the line, your freedom on the line, like standing in front of that judge. But that doctor just gave you some bad news, like the hardest I ever prayed. So when I was standing in front of that judge, man, like, you know, you think you be praying for it. Man, you think you be praying until you pray in front of that judge, man. That's when you be praying, boy. That's when you be crying out to the Lord, man. So, you know, I just think, like, 
like, well, you know, I just wonder what his last moments was like, and I just hope that, I know it was bad, but I just hope that it wasn't too bad, I guess, man. man. Here go a baby that has a skeleton, a skull over their head. Now, it's some kind of ritual, and I ain't going to get too much into details of it, but um, if you look up rich people and uh, rituals with children, you'll find some really terrible stuff. So back in the day, ventriloquism was a big deal, man. Because, you know, back in the day, they ain't had no TV and phones and all that junk to keep them entertained. So they had to do whatever, man. So a guy busts out his dummy and, and everybody sit around and get to, you know, watching or whatever. So this guy here, his act was famous because his dummy, like, look at it. Like, obviously something off with it, right? So what the story was, was that his dummy was a real kid. And he just took the kid and mummified him. And that's why it looked fake, but it kind of looked real though at the same time. Like, you know, it just got a look to it. Like, you know, it just got a weird look. Look at him. It just got a weird look to him, man. And, um, and his act was amazing because it's like he really tapped into this real spirit of this boy, man. So, you know, of course the dog was haunted and this is where the ideas of stuff like Chucky and stuff come from. That along with voodoo dolls and stuff. So here's a ritual and what's funny about this is if you really pay attention to it, the people in the back is in blackface. Like the people that's back there, they not, um, like them ain't no real African people. Look at them. You know, if you realize it, they women. You know, those are all women, man. You can see their chest, you know, you can see they got breasts and they got on dresses. Yeah, so you can see they all got breasts and now, so they got on fake beards and it looked like horns on their head. And I can't tell if this supposed to be like their hair braided or dreaded in or something, but it really looked more like horns, like ram horns. So yeah, man, there's some kind of crazy ritual going on here and it's a white lady laying on the ground. And, uh, man, there's some creepy junk going on. Sometimes when I be out doing deliveries and I be out in the country, well, I be scared that I'm going to roll up on something because I be out there on the back roads and dirt roads and junk. And I be scared that I'm going to roll up on some kind of ritual one day out in the middle of the woods. So some guy found a monkey on the Western Hemisphere. Now, for y'all that ain't good at geography, that's like we on the Western Hemisphere over here in the USA and the Eastern Hemisphere is uh, over there in Europe and Africa and all that junk. So... He found a monkey, an uh, ape, I mean, because we might got monkeys over here, but we ain't got apes or something like that, you know. So he found an ape, like this ape here, and it's like a, it looked human, like he got a human, he got a more human looking face to it. And he found it, and he said it was two of them, but he killed one. And the one he killed, he posted, he put a stick up on it to hold him up and took a photo of it. And this is it, man. So they ain't never found no more of them, so I don't know, they must have. Like, got on one of the ships or something, and when Christopher Columbus and rode across on the ships or something, man. This is the letter man. Now, the letter man, he uh, wore a big leather suit, right? And the suit weighed 60 pounds. And he would walk across, like, different from state to state with this suit on. Now, it didn't matter if it was wintertime, summertime, whatever. And it would, became like a holiday because he would do it on such a regular basis. People knew what house he would be at, what time he would be there, and everything. So they made a little holiday out of it. Like when he would come through your town, the kids would get out of school or take a little break or whatever and give him food and stuff for his trip. And um, he was nice and everything, and he would talk to people, but he never gave nobody no info, or at least it ain't recorded no info on his past. So nobody knows about his past. Nobody know why he did what he did. But he would just put this big 60 pound leather suit on and just walk, <laughs> just walk. Man. So, hey, you know, uh, I, I, me personally, I, I, I can't, you know, I just can't figure out. I guess he, but he, I guess he's just crazy. <laughs> Probably ain't nothing special to it. He's just crazy than a mug, I guess. So look, let me tell you how I got my hands up on this mask right here. It's really, you know, it's crazy. This mug <laughs> looks like me, man. It's crazy. You know, dang, I'm, look, I got this mug. I'm turning into him, man, now that I'm really thinking about it. Before I even get into the story, man, I'm turning it. Look, his head nodded up just like mine. Boy, that's crazy. I just realized that. 
Okay, so let me go on with the story, man. So anyway, I, I was just back in the day, you know, I used to walk a lot back before I got a car. You know, before you get a car, man, you know, you walk it, but once you get a car, it's like walking become the most terrifying thing ever. You be worried about a, a dang warthog or something running out the woods on you, man. But when, you know, but back in the day, I used to be walking. So I was walking past, you know, just walking, like, might have been walking to the store. I don't know. It's been a long time. So while I'm walking, I come across a lady who having a yard sale, right? And it was more it was more of a giveaway than a yard sale. But, you know, I walked up and stuff just seeing what's going on. And she really ain't had nothing, you know, clothes and stuff. It was an old, you know, old black lady. So, you know, she really ain't had, like, no clothes enough for me and stuff like that. And I ain't had no house my own spot at the time. So the little stuff she was giving away wasn't really nothing. But while I'm looking, I see this, right? <laughs> and I'm just sitting there looking at it. And I'm just looking at this kind of, you know, how something catch your eye, you just get lost looking up at it. So then she was on uh, Jamaican. Now, I don't do a real good Jamaican accent, but she like, what you looking at that thing for? Now? And I'm like, uh, you know, man, what's that? She like, you don't want that. And I said, yeah, why, why I don't want it? She said, you don't, don't want that thing, bro. You just, just, you going to get something there, you go somewhere. Like, I barely can understand what she was saying, but I can get the gist of what she was saying, you know. So, um, you know, and I told her, I said, look, man, I'll take it. You know, I don't know why. I just, like I said, I always been in the creepy stuff. So, you know, sure, I just took it, man. <laughs> and, you know, like I said in the other video, you know, this junkie, look, it's handmade. You see this back here? If this was some factory made junk, it wouldn't be, you know, that paint spilling over. You see where they tried to paint it and it's not smooth. You see the hooks on here is just rigged. Like this ain't even no, you know, this ain't, this a piece of wire they got wrapped around here. So. You know, you can see down here they didn't cut it off. They wanted to cut it right there, but they didn't for whatever reason. So, and this ain't no, um, you know, this is a, a one of a kind of piece. Now, some pieces out there that look like it, you know what I'm saying? There's other Jamaican art that look like it, but this is not no made in factory stuff. So, she told me, like, from what I could understand, because <laughs> I, hate, I hated to keep asking her what she was saying, because she, you know, I, sometimes, you know, foreigners man they get a little upset when you can't understand what they say so you like she like hey yeah, come they put a spell on these yeah, they're coming from the old country i like what well, yeah, they're like yeah they put a spell on it come from the old country and yeah, my little husband and she just going so i just see you know i just say whatever i almost think maybe i gave her five dollars i almost feel like she told me just take it but i can't oh, dang did she, I don't know, I can't remember. I might have gave her like $5 for it. And she might have just told me to take it or something, man. But yeah, I done had this mug ever since. Maybe that's why I ain't got no money. If you was in a situation at school where your teacher yelled and got mad for the first time, how did you react? Now, I went to school in Chicago on the west side, man, right in the middle of the hood, man, right in the middle of K-Town. Now, the teacher... The teacher that I know really went off, went off, was my, she was my teacher in second and third grade. I, I ain't gonna put her name out there, because <laughs> she gonna probably end up getting in trouble if anybody ever track her down. But this lady, man, she would uh, take rulers like this, right? She'd take a bunch of rulers and tape them together and would hit us. She actually real legit was hitting people with these rulers. Now, I ain't that old like back in the paddling days, man. So I don't know how she got away with it. I don't know if anybody ever told their mama. I don't know if she knew what kids to hit. If she had some kind of agreement with certain parents. I don't know what it is, but this lady would tell you to put your knuckles out or put your hand out or something. Yeah, she'd be like, put your hand out and she would hit your hand. <laughs> she would... But she'd be like, put your hand out, and she would hit your hand. <laughs> this lady would hit you in the hand, and she got away with it. She would cuss. I mean, one time, man, we was um, taking the ITBS test. It was like the big test at the end of the year. So we taking the test, and my guy, he behind me, my best friend, he behind me. He taking, he doing his, and he going, me and him was like one of the smartest two in the class, if not the smartest two. So he going fast and jump. And I heard her, she linked in and said, slow your way down. And cussed at him, man. And he just started crying, man. And she was like, go get some water. And I was like, man, it lay crazy, man. So, you know, I heard that. I said, man, I started going like this when I heard that. I said, let me slow down before she come and get me shoot. Yeah, uh, now I remember one time me and him, uh, we was playing with like arm wrestling. 
and he um I had my hand right here or something and he was like man get your hand off your breast just joking right and one of the little girls when they told and she was like did you say that to him and, and he was and he's like no I ain't saying I, I lied for him to cover and I was like boy if she found out we lying we gonna <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you know you ain't no snitching in Chicago. Even as a little kid, I know you know you don't you don't tell on your homeboy, man. You know, but yeah, man, that lady. So you know, I seen that junk all going up in school, man. Like my my she she was so rough that people would bring their bad kids to her. They would bring the bad kids to her class. It was one boy, he failed a couple grades. She said, and another teacher brought him to the her class. She said, students, I want y'all to laugh at him because he he can't get right. He done failed multiple times. And we said, <laughs> we said, ah, you know, we laughed at that big man. So, you know, hey man, that joke ain't nothing, man. I so this is Hen Henretta. Now Henretta been around for a long time. My auntie, my grand auntie, Back when we were little kids, man, she would chase us with this thing right here, man. Now, this for y'all that don't know, this thing, like, women put their um, they wig on, you know, before they go to bed, they take their wig off and put it up on head, curl it up and all that junk. And she would get this and chase us for no reason, just because, just because, <laughs> like, she would just get this and chase us with it and, and all that. Then she'd be like, don't make me get in red or we, we ain't even beating done nothing, man. And she get in chases, man. And, um, you know, man, some good memories here, man. I can't, you know, my daughter, she too, my daughter a creep, so she not scared of it. But my next kid, I'm going to chase his butt with this all day, every time. Yeah, yeah. You know. But see, when you, I learned, man, you can't do that junk, man. That junk, like, scare your kids when they don't act good. Because after a while, they ain't scared no more. So you just got to, you know, that junk don't work too long. Hey, bro, man, I'll be out here, man. I'll be out here, man. I'll be out here, man, making these deliveries, man. Bro, the thing about it, like, man, sometimes, bro, it be like just houses and look like shacks and junk, man. And people be living in them junks, man. And it be like, when I see junk like that, man, it's like the, the feeling I get is, bro, y'all up to some, uh, y'all up to something, man. Like, y'all up to some some witchcraft but then that's my worst fear man my worst fear is like i just pull up on one of them folk man thinking i'm gonna make my delivery man and and they got a a, a dang negro down there and they they finna finna sacrifice him or something man or, you know <laughs> man but they all getting covered in uh in, in, in mud just so they can look black and dance around the fire or something man. that's my worst goddamn fear right there boy. Look at that country junk, man. Don't make no sense. Look at this. Man, if I get a flat tire or something out here, boy. How you doing, bud? You look a little lost, don't you? <laughs> Shoot. I'm tired of this junk, boy. For the money, man. I go through this junk right here. Well, one day, man, I don't know. I guess one day I have enough money where I can, uh, where I do something. I'm going back to school or something, man. This can't fuck me. I gotta sit here and bring a package out here. Look at this. What's this, man? Some kind of nigga right off of me, man. Now, look at this, man. Look at this, man. Come on, man. Put some gravel down. You gonna order these packages and junk at least put some dang gravel down, man. See, man, I get stuck in this junk. See, this is the craziest thing about it. You get stuck in it. Man, look. Then I gotta call a tow truck, man. Like, come on, man. Look at this farm over there. Look at that country junk. Got horses and junk sitting over there. Damn, boy, I be so mad because it was a guy. Look, he was telling me, man, I'd never forget, man. He was saying he broke down, and he broke down out there in the um, way out in the little rural part, like I'm at now. He said, man, he broke down. <laughs> he said, oh, a group, and he said he was he just couldn't get that book to start, man. And I guess like his battery cable was loose. So he said he was trying to, you know, tighten the cable up, but he really ain't have um no dang pliers or nothing, man. So he said he um just kept messing with it, kept trying to, you know, he said he tried propping stuff up on it to get it to connect good and all that. So he said he finally got that mug to um he said he finally got it to start up. And he said when he looked up, he seen some headlights coming to him. So he um 
you know, he said he got to pulling off, man. He said when he pulled off, now he was black, but it said it was, it was kind of like he was on the country road like this. Look at that, kind of, look at that, man. That just look creepy in the mud. But he said it was nighttime. Like it got dark, you know, he was out there and it was got dark and junk. And he said his phone, he couldn't get no reception. So he said as soon as he pulled off, uh, he saw a truck, a pickup truck coming to him. And you know how they put the lights up on the roof of the truck? Said it had big old wide crazy lights on it and everything. And he said when he went past that junk, it was a bunch of white boys, man. And he said they all was bald head with beards. And he said they just, he said he could just tell, like, they couldn't see him inside the truck because it was dark. He said they was trying to see inside, but they couldn't see in there. And he said, boy, he already know what time it was, man. The white boys finna, said the white boys finna take him on out, man. So all since I heard this story, I just be on edge, boy. Under the carpet in your house, it might be a pentagram on the floor where somebody baby mama was practicing voodoo. In order to make more money, I cut my hair, cut my beard. And it kind of, you know, it just really messed with me that, you know, my hair won't be accepted, my beard won't be accepted in the corporate world or something, you know, so. But in order to feed my family, it's getting so rough out here, man, this blue collar junk ain't gonna get it no more. So I had to make a change. But it was messed up, man, you know, that you, that's just the world we in, but hey. It is what it is, because I got to feed my folk, man, so I ain't going to let nothing get in the way of feeding them, not even some hell. Dad, as you know, I might want it to, but, you know, <clears throat> and I'm a hood whore, man, you know, I'm supposed to look creepy, man, I don't even look creepy no more, man, I look like a, I look normal. You see right there? Yeah. Uh, Different type of birds, a pigeon, a chicken, and a hawk. What? Somebody was doing voodoo. The name of the church. That church doing voodoo. Oh, that's somebody who cursed <laughs> that church. Oh, they cursed the they church. Cursed the, cursed the, church. Yeah, they are. the first people to march up on MLK birthday was the American oh. cook, cook, cook. Well, I don't know what jail he in, but he didn't stay up in there. Whatever they accused him of, he did it about 10, 11 times. Now, this guy here watched too much hay on him. And he didn't set up here and rob some kind of store or something with a dang football helmet on, man. And the crazy part about it, like, when I saw this picture, I thought he was black, man. But it's actually a white boy, man. So this van I seen when I was driving the other day, man. He got an air conditioner and junk sticking up in the back. And, uh, like a rack with for gun, gun rack or something up on the top, man. And everything all blacked out, boy. You know this guy, man. You know, shoot. Back in the day, you could pick your hair and go hunting at the same time. Yeah, so I just found out that Famous Amos is really a real guy, the cookie guy. You know, they got that box of cookies, them nasty cookies come in that box, man. This guy is really a real person, man. I thought it was just a name they came up with, but apparently, like, this guy really was a cookie monster, like the real life, like, cookie monster professor just coming up with the best thing cookies in the world. And then he put them in a box, and uh, I guess so, made money off of him. I'm going to have to look him up and get, get his whole story. Back in those day, they said this was a comfortable way for the babies to sleep because it was warm back then they by the engine, you know, on the rear engine cars. And then, uh, you know, the the rumble and all that and make the baby, like, kind of shake them and keep them, you know, sleep, keep them, make them sleep and jump. This is Yasuke or Yasuke or something, man. He was the first black samurai, man. He had dreads and a beard and everything, man. This man was doing behind the bank ninja chops and 360, uh, throwing knives and all kind of moves, man. He changed the whole... Hey, so this is a photo NASA put out, man. They say it's um, it's like an alien landing strip. So when aliens need somewhere to land, and this down in Antarctica, man, where all the creepy junk go on. So when they need something to land on, they put the um, they ship make a like a, a race come out, and when that ray come, it flatten out the ice, and this is where they land they ship at before they go um, you know, playing in the water or whatever the freak they be doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. World in World War One, they created a psychological warfare the tactic military and where they just bombed the other side. Completely off they would guard. bomb them for days and days and days. There was no telling who would be bombing. affected by it or why. left a lot of soldiers shook up. They left Those a lot of soldiers jacked up and they called it shell shock. Or electrocuted. 
rested or shot, all for the same illness. So many men were lost to it, there would be a revolution in military attitudes and a new field of medicine created. The condition was called shell shock. These are the men whose minds the dead have ravished. Memory fingers in their hair of murders. Multitudinous murders they once witnessed. State of shock. So I think it, it was a wonderful term because it described it quite perfectly. To the army's alarm, more and more cases of shell shock began to appear. After just six months of war, 15% of the British Army was judged to be suffering from the condition. The most extreme cases were blind, deaf, mute or shaking, yet all without an apparent cause, other than their proximity to bombardment. Similar cases appeared in the French and German armies on the Western Front. The shell shock are the symptoms of a mental purge. In this case, a deaf man responds only to the word bomb. Somehow the mind splits itself off from the body, that they're almost two distinct entities. And we see this after exposure to very traumatic and upsetting events. We know that some of the war psychiatrists talk about people going blind because they just can't bear seeing the carnage around them. The doctors at Netley began to classify the different symptoms. They gave their patients' conditions outlandish names. Hysterical dancing gait. Hysterical slippery ice gait. And battling with the wind. Treatment at this stage was basic. Massage bed rest and a milk diet. trees man right there through the leaves look you see it uh, what a squirrel raccoon possum bird something in the trees man bro you need to uh quit smoking them trees come on man we got stuff to do man you sitting there watching the dang trees all day That for real, that was a crazy last night. Uh, oh, 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 man. What's going what's on, up, man? man? What's up, G? Is it right, How you man? Been? What you been on, bro? Boy, I had to get the new job, man. For real? What? Boy, what you I got that job at the new warehouse where they pay $20 an hour. Dang, dude. $20 an hour? Oh, I've been coming up, man. I've been celebrating three, four days straight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> when you start that thing, bro? Oh, yeah, 27? 27? Let me go. 27? Yeah. 27? I think it's... Hey, but you know it's 28, don't you? It's 28, bro. It's 28. What you talking about? It's 28. 28? Look at that right there. Yeah, look, look. Right, right, right there. Yeah. It's 28. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. So, look. This guy here, he was asleep. Now, while he sleep, he get woke up out of his sleep. Now, when he wake up, he just uh, see his wife standing there. She looking at him like she seen a ghost. So he figured she just tripping or whatever, man. So he get up, 
you know, take his take a shower, all that, get ready for the day, eat his cereal and all that. And um come later he found out that his wife popped him in the head while he was asleep, man. And this is the bullet. The bullet was sitting in his head because he kept complaining of headaches. So he had finally went to the um to the hospital or whatever and they found out a dang bullet just sitting up in his brain the whole time, man. So <laughs> You know, it's, uh, well, I tell you, man, you gotta watch it. You messed up, make them dang women mad, boy. You in trouble. All right, so that's a Bigfoot back there. Nation, you think Bigfoot real? No. <laughs> no. FBT was play for Bigfoot. FBT was play for Bigfoot. FBT, <laughs> what is FBT? I watched that on the tablet. Oh, on YouTube? Yes. So you think Bigfoot real or fake? <laughs> now that's a wild boar. A wild boar is like um, it's like a pig, but it's like a super pig. Oh! And they, and they real mean, man. Like, like oh, this pig here, man. This is a wild boar. Now this like usually they big. Look, look, be quiet. So they usually they big, but this one is like real big, crazy big. You see how big that thing is? If you ever see a wild boar, run, okay? It's not friendly. Okay, don't yes. try to pet it. And what's the animals you're supposed to run if you see them? Raccoon. Yeah, raccoon, what else? Werewolf. <laughs> Werewolf, yeah, what else? Snake. Yep, the snake, what else? Is that it? Hmm? Mosquitoes. A mosquito? Bees. <laughs> that was stinky. We're going to be itchy. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, man, this just don't make no sense. So, look, the goddamn dolphin, man, when dolphins get bored or whatever, they go mess with puffer fish, so they blow up. <laughs> when they blow up, they use them as balls, man. And, you know, the people say this dumb stuff. Well, I wish whoever said this, I, I dare you let a woman put her foot up on my chestises and let an elephant put his foot up on their chestises, and we see who still got a chestises when it's jumped over with. Now look, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't no coon or nothing, man. I love black folk. And this some rock thing up in Finland or whatever. But man, if this junk was over in the hood, we'd have been knocked this down, boy. We'd have been run, run, running back, flipping off of this thing, man. We'd have put a rim up on it. Then somebody had ducked on it, towed the whole thing down. Like, we'd have towed this junk up years ago. <laughs> I bet you ain't even realized the eyebrow, though, did you? See now, if you don't really know what you, if you really ain't been married and don't know women's and stuff like that, like you'll think you're looking at like two people that died and then they had one last kiss before. I don't know, maybe a volcano hit and killed both of them. I don't know what that, but that's what you would think if you don't know no better. But see me, I, I knows women's, so I'm gonna tell you what happened here. So the husband on the right, so he had cussed her out and can left the house, went out, got drunk, was messing with them other women's. Then he came home, and when he came home, he got up in the bed. So she took a, a, a axe or something and busted his dang head open. That's why his head cracked open. And then she came and grabbed him around the mouth and said, Let me tell you something, nigga. Don't you ever call me no B. <laughs> and that's what happened. So a lot of times you hear old folks saying, you know, young folks, man, we all in the phones. We distracted, this and that. And it's true, man, but... The jump been going on, man. We ain't learned this jump from nowhere. This is the eyes of a child who lived to see the Hiroshima nuclear bomb go off. Now, for y'all that don't know, during World War II, Japan was on the side with the Nazis in America and uh, Great Britain and stuff. They was on the Allied side. But, uh, so, in the middle of them fighting in this war, when the Japanese got in, they realized that the Japanese was, you know, they cut from a different cloth, man. They gonna fight until... It ain't on um, to like it ain't nothing left, man. Like when they throw down, they throw down, man. So apparently America said the only way we can beat them is to just drop a nuke on them. Now, is that really true that they had to drop a nuke on them just to get them to give up? You know, that people some people say no, nah. some people say they just did their junk out of, you know, America showing oh, you think you a killer? We the real killers. So they dropped two nukes on them. And uh, messed them folks up, man, for generations. And, uh, you know, this is a boy who, who saw the bomb and it flashed and tore his eyes up. Pilot that dropped the nuke, the, you know, they, they say he went crazy, man, because, you know, they knew they was dropping something. They knew it was a bomb. 
but they didn't, you know, the soldiers didn't really understand what they was really doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, they knew they was doing something. They knew it was gonna kill some people, yeah. But they had no idea that, like, the real devastation that was behind that joint. So just really think about it. Think about it. America dropped nuclear bombs on civilians. Men, women, children, all of that, old folks, just to, you know, claim so they could win the war. You know, that's, that's, that's the type of country we in. Hey, so this man right here, he got bit by a snake, and there's a poisonous snake. You know, that they be playing with snakes, so he to use his last little bit of energy to bite the snake back and put, try to put the poison back in him. Get a load of this photo right here. This UFO-looking cloud, pinkish-colored, covered the sky over the Turkish city of Bursa. The country's meteorological officials say that this specific formation is an example of lens clouds. Hey, this a can of soda or a can of pop? One of them queen bees got stuck up in this car, so then the car pulled off, and they ain't know, so the goddamn bees and followed the car to get their queen up out. I'd have told them, y'all can get y'all queen back. Just leave me a little bit of that honey, goddamn. In Philly, the police got up in a helicopter, and they dropped C4 down, which is an explosive for y'all that don't know. They dropped down the explosives on this neighborhood. In this neighborhood, they evacuated the neighborhood first, but the only people that wouldn't evacuate was just people from this group called MOVE, M-O-V-E. Now, MOVE, they was like, um, they believed like they wanted to get back to the hunter-gatherer days. That's like the days back when you had to go out and kill your food. They was into stuff like that. They didn't like the industrial stuff. And um, I guess the whole setup of American capitalism and jobs and all that kind of stuff, they didn't, they didn't like that. They want it to be more like, more like the animal days, man. Now, how they, why they believed in all that and all that, that don't matter how, you know, cause I almost even didn't want to talk about that cause the bottom line is no matter what they believed in, how does the police just bomb them like, like they the military and, and like, if you looked at this picture and didn't really pay no attention, you'd think this was Baghdad or something, man. This is in Philly, man, right here in America, in the 1980s. In the 80s, man, the police dropped, uh, dropped bombs on the neighborhood. They left 250 people homeless, and they killed 11 people, kids included, women included. That was um, part of that movement. It was only two survivors, and they ended up paying millions to the survivors and millions to the people who lost their homes and stuff. But man, just think about that. Just think about that, man. This is America, man. They dropped a bomb on their own people. Just because they had different religious or different cultural or whatever beliefs. Hey, man. Ain't nothing got to get, ain't nothing got to be done like that. One of the most violent riots in the history of America happened in 1967. Because this building right here, it was a secret, uh, like a bar up on the second floor. It was an unlicensed bar where black folk would go and hang out and get their drink on and all that. So they was partying one night uh, from two GIs that just came home from Vietnam. That's what they call soldiers. So, you know, so they was um, up in there partying and it was 82 people in there. Police ain't know it was going to be that many people in there, but they bust in there and arrested everybody. And when the people outside saw them bringing out just a big crowd of folks like that, it sparked off some real, real tension. In 1967, the Detroit riots was one of the, it was the worst riot at the, at this time. Now it got passed up later by the LA riots, but at the time this was the worst. And uh, it started off when everybody seen them arrest them 82 black folks. So after that, you know the people went crazy. Now. It's said that the, the guy that owned the club, now the clubs, they called them blind pigs, the little secret clubs. He say that his daddy was the owner. He said he was the doorman. He say he threw a bottle at a policeman, and that's where it really sparked off everything. Now, uh, black people, to get revenge at this time, man, it was like when stuff went wrong, black folk would go and, and riot to get revenge. they go there because it was like, what else could they do, you know? So they go... And uh, they started off looting a, a department store or something like that. And uh, it might have been a grocery store. And they went in and uh, started looting this store, tore the place up, burnt it down. And uh, it just went on and on from there. You know, this is the destruction, man. Look at it. It looked like 
It looked like um, somewhere over there in the Middle East, man. It's hard to even believe that this is America. During the 1967 riots in Detroit at the Algiers Motel, the National Guard was called in and, and the police forces all in. They was on, they was just on, on 10,000, man, ready to go. The army was called in and during the riots, all kind of stuff. So, um, what happened at this, at this motel, they got a report that it was snipers at this motel. So they went up in there and they found these three young black men. And uh, they executed them. They executed them. They, the report showed that they was, you know, shot from behind twice. And they were shot um, close. And a witness said that it was done by one of the National Guard people. And the fact that they were shot twice, man, that's professional. That ain't like just no random robbery type stuff. That's some professional stuff. So, you know, they got the new, uh, the face slap show, man. But see, the thing, man, people think that it's, it's the, uh, it's the, the face that hurt it. Ain't the face your hand, man. You ever slap somebody full of strength? Where your hand be? <laughs> this right here, this is the picture of the real Freddy Krueger. So, look, I'm trying to tell y'all, some of y'all don't believe it. This junk ain't just made up. These movies, man, they come from real stuff. The movies come from real stuff because these people look up the serial killers. They look up to um, murderers and all that, man. You ever seen how uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and all these people got these fan clubs? Man, people glorify these folks, man. They they think they mind is interesting, and they and and and, and they they living out they fantasies through these folk, man. So when the, uh, when they when Wes Craven found out the, about the Freddy, the real Freddy, he went and made a whole a whole franchise off of it. And um, he don't, you know, he keeping it, he, he kept it under wraps. But, you know, man, come on, bro. He ain't came up with that junk on his own, man. It's the real Freddy right there. Freddy Krueger Gary site is out there. Okay, let me break something down, man. Freddy Krueger, real name was Frederick Krueger. All right? It's like a German name or something, man. He was way back in the 17, 1800s, all right? Okay, so you can't find this on Google because... It happened too long ago, all right? You can't find it. You got this something that you just got to, you got to be lucky. You got to get lucky to find this one, all right? And then you got to use your brain, put the pieces together. They ain't came up with this. Ain't nobody just came up with this on their own, man. How they decide what he going to look like? They just decided, oh, we're going to get a burnt face, a hat, and this sweater. It come from a real person, man. Back in the 1800s, he was killing kids. And stuff at night. Alright? So kids started having nightmares about them when the word got around. And when the word got around and the nightmares and all that stuff happened, that's where they got the thing from. Alright? Now look, I know y'all don't want to believe it. I know that, you know, it's, it's your worst nightmare come true. But hey man, Freddy real, man. Look, let me tell you. If it got out, like without a, a shadow of doubt that Freddy was based off a real serial killer, don't you know that'll hurt the movie, man? You know what I'm saying? Look what they're going through right now with the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. You know, you got to be careful when you put these movies out. Like, you know, if it come out Freddy based off a real thing, and then that junk blow up, and they was like, they ain't think that that, you know, they want Freddy to be like a, a how he turned into like a household item. You know, kids got Freddy toys and junk. You know, they don't want it to be, you know, somewhere, um, <laughs> People scared of them. You know, they want them to be an action figure, man. You know, you, you can't go to the store and buy your kid a, a Jeffrey Dahmer or, or an Ed Gein toy or or whatever like that. But you can go to the store and buy a Freddy or... You ever heard about the organ donor in the hood and the projects? The roughest, the worst areas. There's a guy that goes out late at night. He drives a big van. And what he does is he grabs people who nobody would care if they miss him. He grabs them so they can take their organs. How much you think somebody would pay to get a new heart that need a heart? How much you think people would pay for kidneys? How much you think people would pay for these organs that they need to survive? So, in order to get these organs, what's the best place to take them from? Take them from the people who nobody care who miss them. Because of the organ donor, a lot of black people don't put organ donor on their license because it's said that, uh, like if you watch the movie Us, 
But get out, I mean, get out. And get out, it was like they wanted the black people, they wanted to steal their bodies because their bodies were so strong and powerful and, and fast and all this stuff. So the organ donor, he goes around through the black neighborhoods to steal people's organs, which is why so many people come up missing. And that's why you don't hear about it, because they go missing to the highest bidder. You ever realize that you never seen a commercial for microwaves? You ever realize that? Why you think that is? Tell me in the comments. If anybody get it right, I'll tell y'all why. Now, see, I'm about to make a lot of people feel stupid because I told y'all that these movies is not based off of you know, fictional made-up junk. These movies is made from real serial killers, man. Michael, Freddy, Jason, they all made from real serial killers. You just can't find it all the time because they hid it because they don't want people to know because Michael, Freddy, and Jason is icons. And they don't want people to be making icons. Look at what they just went through with the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Look at this guy. This is a serial killer. This is where the Michael Myers story came from. Look at him. The Michael Myers mask didn't come from the guy from Star Trek. Yeah, but the, they kind of faced it. But this is where they really got the mask from. This is where Michael and Jigsaw came from. Look at the mask. Look at it. <laughs> look like me while I'm sitting here talking. Shoot. It look like it's made of. Shoot, look like me. But anyway, told y'all Michael and them real. Now look, y'all going to sit here and tell me this ain't Michael Myers. This the real Michael Myers. Michael Myers was based from a real serial killer. Let me tell you something, man. The people that wrote these movies, man, they worship serial killers, right? Hollywood, the media, they love serial killers because they make money off of them. They play it like they interesting and like they, they brains is worth picking and, 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 and questioning. It. They think, man, they love that junk, man. Bro, they love these serial killers, man. You see how folk be sending them fan mail and stuff? This where Michael Myers come from. Michael Myers ain't just no no fictional character. He was a real thing. Now, I ain't saying he had demon powers and all that junk, but I'm saying the whole method, the way he moved, the way he got down, all that. Man, they came and took that junk. Look at this mask. That's Michael right there. Look like me too, but that's Michael. Here go the grave of Fred W. Kruger. Freddy Krueger, Frederick Krueger, whatever you want to call him, man. Here it go right here. I think this one is the this one. I think is the real one because, like I said before, it's multiple ones. But this one here, I think this one the real one because it's ninety. It's nineteen twelve to nineteen ninety one when he died. To me, that makes sense for Wes Craven to be and like came across the guy and heard the guy's story. But how it went was back in the day, back for security systems, back before you know all this and that. He would break into people's house and mess with the kids in the middle of the night. You know, I ain't going to say if he hurt or I ain't going to hear nothing, but he come in there after the kids at nighttime and people, kids was coming up missing. So what started happening, the rumor got to getting around, oh, you got to watch out at night. The man coming at night, coming at night. And that's what happened. That's how, I, that's where the whole story came from, from what this guy did back at night. Now look, this guy right here. If you see him in your dreams, then you in trouble. <laughs> this man right here, he's been in a whole bunch of folk dreams over the years, man. And uh, I'm going to tell you where he came from, but I'm trying to really see first if anybody seen them first. So if you done seen this man in your dreams, me, I can't never really, you know, you're a white guy, obviously, man. You know, like I ain't never had no dreams. Have I ever had a dream with a white person in it? You know what? I think I've only had one dream when I was a little kid with a white person. I don't think I ever had another dream. I had a kid when I was a kid. I had a dream that when I grew up, I was going to be a white man. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I thought. I guess I thought when you grew up, you turned white. I don't know. So, but if you see this man in your dream, let me know, man, because I'm going to tell you all what's up with this guy, man. But if you think you know, just tell me in the comment. Hey, y'all ever heard the story of Dead Darius? If you ain't go, it's, um, it's about a boy in Alabama, man. And he, um, when he was a kid, he ended up dying. And so what his family did, man, is they took his body and mummified it, stuffed it in junk, and sat it on the porch. And for years, man, people were driving by and seeing it. And they got, like, infamous, I guess you could call it. And people all around the area 
you know, knew about it, and uh, the legend went on and on until one day, you know, they took the body, I guess, once his parents passed on or whatever. But, um, yeah, this boy was sitting out there on the porch, man, and, um, yeah, he was sitting out there, and, um, and it would just freak people out. Kids would go to the next block, whatever they had to do to get around it, man. So, you know, y'all let me know if y'all ever heard this, man. If y'all want to know some more about it, I'll tell you some more about it. You can YouTube Hood Horror Dead Darius, and it'll get you the whole story. If you, Yeah, so look, Dead Darius, um, he was from Alabama, right? Now, he was um, he was sat on the porch by his family because he died. So they took his body, man, and... Um, like, I don't know, bro, they must have been, man, I don't know what kind of who must have worked at the funeral home or what, but they took his body and had it, um, like, mummified, and, like, what's they called when you take, like, a, a cat or something, or a dog, uh, what's a deer or whatever, and put it up on a the wall, they did their junk with him, man, and, um, uh, and now it's just for sit him on the porch, so this is what people would see when they ride by, man. Bro, could you imagine what that junk like to drive by? Or walk by somebody's house. Imagine you a kid from school, and on the way from walking home, you walk past another kid that's on the porch just forever, you know. <laughs> like, man, you know, I, I like to sit on the porch myself, man. But, bro, I ain't trying to sit on that mud that long. Boy. All right, all right this is how we going to test who really from the hood or not, man. If you know where this from, then you is a certified hood Negro, man. Now, you don't know where this from, then you probably didn't eat grits a lot in the morning. And rice, you know, you probably was eating oatmeal. You ever done woke up at 3.33 in the morning? If you ever done just woke up at 3.33 in the morning, you better take your butt back to sleep. I'm telling you, because what you getting ready to see is something that you wish that you had never sunk. Right? You so you see this right here? This is why I do what I do. Because it be creepy stuff happening in the hood too, but they don't report on it. We got all kind of, man, we got stuff happening in the hood worse than happening anywhere else. Only thing is, it just don't hit the news. It only hit the news when somebody shoots somebody with some gang-related, drug-related stuff. But the creepy stuff, man, you got more UFOs in the hood. You got all that junk in the hood. The thing is, we just don't run our mouth. <laughs> you know, we just, like, man, hey, look, you see that right here. Somebody see something like this. Somebody was taking a picture in the alley. They, um... You know, I don't know why they was taking the picture. I guess, I'm guessing they didn't see this when they was taking it at first. I don't know the whole story on it. I'm trying to find it. Once I find it, I'm going to let y'all know. But, man, it's still like this in the hood all the time, man. It's all kind of it's just, you know, we just don't speak on it, man. You know, most of the time we keep our damn mouth shut. Plus, ain't nobody going to believe you anyway. They're going to think you. So, some of y'all might not know it, but the original Frankenstein character, like, this junk ain't just come from nowhere, man. Look, this lady is supposedly wrote by this lady. This lady ain't just grew up and just out of nowhere came up with the ability to write a story like that, man. Especially back in them days when women was a lot of times, man, they were shut up and were not even, you know what I'm saying? Now she come out and write this crazy story. The real Frankenstein happened because man has always been, you know, since Jesus' times, trying to figure out how to get people to come back to life because, you know, he was able to do it. And people were trying to mimic that junk so they could prove that, you know, religion it was fake and that, um, you know, science can explain it. So what they did was they started experimenting on how to bring folk back to life. And they figured if they could mess around and figure out how to do that. And, of course, who you think they did it with? You think they did it with white people? They did it with slaves. They did it with black folk. They did it with people who was under bondage, man. Who else you going to experiment on? Same thing. Look. Uh, you know, I'm going to prove it to you right now. Look at movies today, right? When you watch movies today, they never can come up with no new ideas. They keep redoing Halloween. They keep, now they finna redo Hellraiser. They keep redoing Chucky and different types of Chucky. They got this Megan thing coming out, which is just a girl Chucky. They keep on redoing the same things over and over. And every time you see something that's good, something like American Horror Story, something like Jeffrey Dahmer's show, it's based off of true stuff. So the only time when something decent come out is when it's something true. So don't y'all did it, everything that they didn't did come from something. It started back with Frankenstein. Frankenstein was not no fictional made up story. Yeah, I ain't the character didn't come back to life. No, that ain't that's part, yeah. That's made up. But the experiments and the experiments was done on slaves, black people, people that nobody would care what you did with them. You see what I'm saying? Easy man. 
All right, so I'm going to break it down one more time because some folk be hard of hearing. Some folk don't want to listen. Some folk like listening and learn the hard way. So look, the lady supposedly wrote Frankenstein back in the 18, 1900, early time, a long time ago, right? Back when, you know, like, this lady wrote this crazy story. And a lady, too, like, you know, like, that was huge, man, because I, you know, that was a lady writing a horror novel that just changed it, just changed the game up. You know, where'd she get this from? Huh? Where did she get this whole idea from? Because the scientists back then used to be trying to play God, man. Come on, man. Y'all know how them folk got down, man. And Frankenstein, German or something, man, or something like that, or over there from by Germany. You know how them folk got down. You know how the Germans got down, man. They did all kind of crazy stuff, supposedly. So they did the experiments on black men because it's just like in a movie, Get Out. They wanted black folks, right? They wanted all big strength and muscles and bad credit and all that, right? All right, so here you see stuff that if you ain't never been to Chicago, New York, cities like that, man, this is you see people lined up for drugs, man. I'm talking about straight up lined up like like they giving away money or something. Now, how do they get away with this? That's a whole nother story. But look at horror movies, right? You see horror movies always take place in the suburbs, take place the family moved into a new house, and this or that why don't they make movies take place in the hood where all the suffering is at look at all these people man you got folks like this lined up for drugs so you know they got kids that they mistreating their parents mistreated them they don't listen to their parents they don't listen to their family they can't keep straight on their job these the suffering this is the, where the ghosts and, and ghouls and all that gonna come from Every horror movie is the same, man. Every movie start off like this. It start off, uh, they just moved to a new house. Then they move to a new house. Uh, first, like the kids start drawing weird pictures at school. You know, they go to school and start drawing people dying. Then the next thing you know, mama start acting crazy. And she starts seeing stuff in there. And, that, and she trying to tell daddy, but daddy too busy with work. Too busy cheating. Too busy having fun. Too busy... Uh, stressing out over life He ain't trying to hear that He gotta pay these bills So Then before you know it Stuff gets so crazy Now the daddy like Oh I should have believed you No no Everybody freaking out now Then they go get somebody to, uh, Whatever A psychic person They go get them Same old stuff Over and over man Poor movies should be in the hood There should be more movies In the hood man This is where people Look people lined up For drugs man Early in the morning, like, come on, man, this is where the horror is at, man. This is. All right, so I'm gonna let y'all in on some of the stories. So here you go. So, the real Freddy Krueger, what he would do is at nighttime, back in the early 1900s, late 1800s, around that time, he was sneaking in people's houses. He sneak in people's houses at night and terrorized the kids. And this is why the kids started having the nightmares and that glove on his hand. You know, back then, he, people made their own little tools and stuff. So he took a couple knives, I guess, put it on the glove, put it, you know, help wore it on his hand. Because I guess to him, you know, it looked like a really creepy thing. I don't know how effective it really was, but it looked terrible. You see somebody with long fingers like that. And he sneak into the kids' houses and stuff. So kids started the word was getting around and kids was having nightmares about this man and the nightmares were so bad you know people didn't know if he was real and people didn't really believe he was real some people figured that you know it was just like a little legend or whatever keep all right, so she said, maybe you do some research on Mary Shelley. This is embarrassing. Just say it loud. Just because you say it loud don't mean that you're right. Well, first of all, let's do it like this. How today the doctors know how to do the surgeries that they do? How the doctors know how to go inside a person, do this, do that, fix this, fix that, tear that up, take this out? How did they get there? They got there from trial and error over years and years and years. Now, when they was doing this trial and error, how do you think they got, they practiced some? Have you ever heard of the Tuskegee experiment? Have you ever heard of the time when black men, maybe women too, but I know black men was, uh, was injected with stuff to see what would happen. Have you ever heard of that? This is nothing new. Now, I know they might not talk about that, and I know it might be hard for you to accept, but throughout history, 
folk have experimented on people that they look down on, just like they looked at black folk as animals. So today they do tests and experiments on animals with products and stuff, right? Don't they do tests and research on animals and all that? So what you think they used to do it on back in the day, man? So, hey, I ain't saying Mary Shelley did it. I'm not saying she was taking part in it. But I'm saying that this is the practices that was happening that she took her inspiration from. All right, I'm going to let y'all know, in on something else a lot of folk don't know. It used to be giants that walked the earth. Now, if you don't believe it used to be giants that walked the earth, it's in the Bible. Because what happened was um, the angels was having uh, relations with regular women. The earth women. I guess earth women back then must have been so goddamn fine that the angels would come down and be like, man, I got to get me some of that. So when they would have children, their children was giants. And to me, this explained some of this old like stuff that you seen folks build back in the day because look at this how could they build something like this thousands of years ago but today they they keep saying oh we can't figure out how they did it how they did it how they did the pyramids how they did this how they did that they can't figure out how they did that but we supposed to be so smart right so they had to have some kind of help man they had to just be some big giant move this scrape that and move that around that's the only way i could see it that they could have made all right, I'm getting ready to blow your mind right here now. Come on, look at this picture here. What you see going on? You see a white man looking like a, looking almost kind of like a, with a nervous like smile. Then you see this little black ventriloquist dummy over there whispering in his ear now. Now, tell me what, what, what this coming from? <laughs> what you, just use your, use your, uh, use your man to come up with what's going on here. Y'all ever heard of the movie Baby's Kids? Now, some of y'all might not know, Bebe's Kids was about a, a guy, I forgot the man's name, he died, though, he's a comedian. He uh, was trying to get with this woman, so she asked him to watch her kids, so he gonna watch her kids and take them out to the amusement park and all kind of crazy junk gets going on, kids was bad, so that's where people be like, man, them kids, man, them Bebe's, them little bad Bebe kids. But guess what this white man name is? Uh, what you think this white man name is? So you know I'm sitting here minding my own business man doing my thing man you know how I do man and all of a sudden y'all heard of Karen's right well this is a Keith a Keith come for me saying that I'm lying on my videos and junk like that I'm looking at my comments he down in the comments then I seen he done made videos and junk calling me out let me tell you something man for one first thing watch your mouth because I'm a hood you know hood horror family friendly channel now this is where you know, grandkids and kids and all the grandparents, everybody sit around the phone and, you know, have a good old time kicking some good old stories, man. So watch your mouth, man. Second thing, and it's Sunday too, man. Second thing is, have you ever heard of Tuskegee Experiment? Have you ever heard about how it's proven doctors treat black folk different in hospitals? How black women don't get the same amount uh, of pain medication when they have a baby? Have you ever heard of, and then we just gonna start there. We just gonna start there. Why you saying Frankenstein and junk ain't no proof on how they do black people? Hey, mugs think I'm dumb, right? So look, so, so what people try to call you out, right? So then when you go back at them, they gonna report you for like bullying them or something, right? So they come hard, man, come with the cuss words and all this. But look, let me tell you something. When you come at me, it's not gonna bother me, bro. Like I said, man, hey, I'm from Chicago. You know, I live in Atlanta. I brought from the hood, man. <laughs> so, like, unless you finna shoot me or hurt my family, like, I ain't finna get mad at you. So, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention your name. I'm not gonna, because if I do that, you just gonna say I'm bullying you, man. And then you're gonna try to report me, cause you probably mad that you see me growing. So, guess what, baby? I'm gonna keep on talking my junk, and I'm gonna keep on telling people the truth on these horror movies. Alright? Now y'all tell me what movie and what, what story y'all want to know next. So I give you the truth on it and we move on to the next level, man. Cause every, alright, let me tell y'all something, man. Frankenstein is a real story. Okay. No, the man was not brought back to life, but they tried to do it. They tried to do it. They used electricity to get the body to move. But now it didn't bring the soul, you know, when this person died, the soul gone, the spirit gone. So you can get a body to move, twitch, or uh, throw up, doo-doo. You might get the body to do all kind of stuff, but the person ain't living no more. 
All right. Now, Frankenstein is not just a made up character. Frankenstein was a real story from what they was trying to do. Y'all know that the Germans was into all kind of crazy stuff. And they tried to learn how to do all kind of science projects so they could play God or prove God wasn't real, depending on, you know, whatever. So when they did these experiments, who do you think they experimented on? Okay. Who do you think they experimented on? Do you think they did these experiments on their mamas, brothers, daddies, sisters, uncles, aunties? No, they did it on people that they looked at was less than people. All right. So what Hitler and them did to Jews, they did to Jews because they didn't look at Jews as the same. They didn't look at black people as the same. But the things that America has done right here in America, they did it to American black people. They didn't do it to they people. They did it to Native Americans. They did it to black folks. They did it to people from other cultures. They did not do it to their own culture. Duh. Duh. Like, uh, it's simple, man. So. For people telling me that Frankenstein it ain't got nothing to do with black, you don't know what you're talking about, all right? All right, look how sad he is, man, because he know. They know he got his own people, man. They, hey, they was doing these experiments. That's how they know how to do surgery today. That's how they know all these things they know about surgery in the human body, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the digestive system. How you think they know all this stuff? They don't just, they know it from the stuff that they did until they learned. People weren't just born with this knowledge. They found out through trial and error. And when they did their trial and error, who do you think they did? They test on. They do the same thing today. They do clinical trials on people today. They do it on animals and all kind of stuff. Except back then, who was the animals? We, they looked at us as the animals. Don't you remember that black people was like uh, uh, three-fifths of vote or uh, three-eighths or something like that, a person? Uh, you know, we was a, a fraction of a person. So if you, how you think they're going to determine if they stuff worked or not? I guess next they're going to tell me Jeepers Creepers not real, right? Jeepers Creepers was a real serial killer. The only difference is they made them supernatural. That's all they do in these movies. They take real serial killers and they make them supernatural because they, they look, they is superheroes to the people that are, they worship these folk. So the Hollywood worship, so they take real superhero, real super, uh, serial killers and make them supernatural. And when they make them supernatural, then they make them cool. They put them in a movie and make them cool. Next thing you know, you rooting for Michael, Jason, and, and Jeepers Creepers. You rooting for them. <laughs> you ain't even realizing they the bad guy. You cheering for Freddy now, man. You cheering for Scream them. They know what they be doing. They based from real killers. This is the truck from the guy that was running people off the road, killing them out in the country this is his truck and that's just part of this what they stole from real life that's just one part of all right here i come with some more facts i'm finna <laughs> look so here you see a white man right and this back in the old days you can tell by the way they dress see so here you can see a white man now he didn't took this black man did this black man look drugged to you do he look like he just got up and you know, like been in a grave somewhere. Look at the expression on his face. It's like a zombie expression, right? His face all boned out and everything. He looked dead. Now, at the same time, look how big and huge and muscular he is. And look how this white man is terrified of him. Because he created this man. This is Frankenstein. Frankenstein was a black man. This junk is real, right? Now, I don't believe he came back to life. But I do believe they tried to bring them back to life. If they experimented on people, who you think they experimented on? Did Nazis experiment on Jews because they thought Jews wasn't real people? So you think these white folk didn't experiment on? All right, so right here you see one of the earliest pictures, if not the earliest picture, like a flying saucer, right? Now, uh, I don't really believe in aliens, but... I believe the alien technology, I believe it's just technology that they already got because if it was aliens, I feel like they'd have been here by now. Like something would have happened by now, something would have happened. All right? It'd have been a showdown or one would have slipped up and, and left the ship in cruise control and fell asleep and ran into a building. Something would have happened by now. So 
That's why I really don't believe in aliens. But I do believe America got a tech a technology to you know for the flying saucers and junk. And you know, cause they got jets that can hover, so why not a a freaking a plate that can hover? So yeah, I got it here. So now another thing, I'm gonna make a second video right after this one. It's a lot of flying saucers that be in the hood. The only thing is we just keep our mouth shut and we don't be reporting. Alright, so it's UFO sightings in the hood all the time. The only thing is we don't call police. We don't, you know, we don't call police when people, you know, people won't even tell when somebody gets shot. So you know ain't nobody finna call police when uh um, there's a freaking see something flying through the sky that they can't make sense of. So it's a lot of sightings in cities like Chicago and stuff. But, you know, nobody calls it in. Like people from certain areas call it in, but folks from the areas where I grew up at, they ain't finna go find out what the UFO hotline is. Right? It's just gonna become a little story that people tell on the block. It's not gonna be, you know, it's not just gonna, it just ain't gonna make headlines like that. Yeah, they might put it on Facebook or something like that, but it's not gonna be or get reported like that. It's not gonna get credit, so it end up going to other other places. Now, me, I don't really believe. All right, so let's talk about these UFOs. Now, here you see a spaceship, right? You see a couple of white mains. They all standing around. And you see this thing right over here on the, over here. See that star over there? I guess that's my left. On my left, your right. You see that star over there? Here go a flying saucer type thing. And there go a star over there. We show you it's made in America. Because, you know, Americans, we got to put stars on everything. Bro. Flying saucers is real. It don't come from no aliens, though. That junk is made right here. If you don't believe me, they had them Harrier jets that float in the middle of the air, all right? They already got stuff that float in the air. If you think I'm lying, go on YouTube. Since y'all love talking about Google and YouTube, go to YouTube, Google, look it up. They have jets that can float in mid-air, all right? All they got to do is make them a, a shape of a plate, and then you got a flying saucer. Think about it. It's easy. They come. All right, look. I'm finna hit you with a little bit more. So now look. If America, think about it, they had, uh, they got the technology already. And now another thing. How do you think they created something like in movies, man? How they create something that don't exist? You can't create something that don't exist. You can only create things that exist. Right? You can only make things that's that's possible to be things. You can't make things from nothing. So. Spaceships, something that they had, they had airplanes and they said, man, how can we make an airplane but it just stay in one spot? Cause they use it in the military, man, and when they attacking, you know, they don't want the thing to be constantly moving. They want it to stop so they got to lay down, blow their junk up, man, make sure they hitting their target. So they did it. They just put it in spaceships because stuff like this keep us interested, keep us you know, they, they like that kind of stuff, man. Keep us, you know, keep some news going. Keep us looking crazy, you know. They like that, man. America get a kick out of that, man. Y'all know about the space race. So during slavery, young black kids, starting at about the age of three, were serving food to the older folks, the folks who was out working in the fields and stuff. They would, um, I guess the older folks would at least cook the food, but we had a three-year-old serving the food. Now, if anybody had kids, you know, my daughter's smart as they come, but, you know, going, pick, taking food out into the hot sun, into the fields, you know, that'd have been a lot for her to do and stay focused on. But they was doing it at three years old. It was even reports of kids who was working so hard that they, 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 they when they found their bodies, they, their bodies in this mass grave somewhere in like New York or New Jersey, that there was, they said they, they muscles and stuff had detached from the bone or uh, something like that from how hard they worked these kids, man. They basically worked them to death. Now, I ain't saying, I don't know, of course it wasn't everywhere. I guess certain slave masters may have been more brutal than others, I'm sure. But there's some circumstances where kids work themselves to death, man. Now, you know, I look at Hollywood, man. I look at these horror movies coming out. And, man, tell me what's most scary than seeing a place, a time where kids working themselves to death, man. During slavery, like I said on the, in the previous video, they had these little kids, man, starting at three years old, working in the fields. Now, with so much pain, so much suffering going on, so much heartache, so much heartbreak, so much, 
yeah, destruction, man. People lives being ripped and torn apart. So, you know, fathers watching their kids being sold, mothers watching their children being sold, husbands losing their wives, stuff. It's the things they went through, man. Look how much pain is there. This is what, you know, if people going to do movies, at least do movies about things that make sense. Put the movies in times like here. Just imagine if, if it's ghost anywhere. If it's a ghost any goddamn where he's going to be down there on them, on them plantation lands where people still living to these days. Some of them living good, living rich. They'll be getting haunted. Imagine if they gave me millions of dollars on a budget to do horror movies. And imagine if I did a horror movie about what it was like during slavery times. Imagine if I did a horror movie where the, 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 the demon, the monster, wasn't a demon or monster like, you know, it was in, like you see movies today, but it was the master, the person with a whip that was going to tear your back up, that was going to put that whip into your skin until your back looked like this because you tried to be free because you tried to save your children, because you tried to save your your spouse, because you tried to have some dignity, because of whatever. Wouldn't that be the scariest movie you ever saw? Think of the fear when you run it and you hear those dogs barking and you hear them horses running. Think about that. You see them lanterns lit up. Man, it'd be the scariest movie you ever made. The Michael Myers mask would come from here. It don't come from uh, the guy from Star Trek. Yeah, it do, but that's not the real original design. This is the original design of the Michael Myers mask. It's from a serial killer who used to sneak into people's houses at night and 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 do bad things to them. I ain't getting too into detail because, you know, hey, man, if, if it, my family was a victim, I wouldn't want nobody just, you know, like, just get it. It ain't about this, you know, but... I'm trying to let y'all know that, you know, these movies and stuff is based on real killers, all right? They're based on real serial killers, period. They take elements from real serial killers and they make it supernatural. That way, if they make it supernatural, you can root for the bad guy. You know, you can root for Michael. You can root for Jason. You root for Freddy. It ain't like you want to see Michael get lose. You know, you want to see Michael keep coming back and, and just be unstoppable and all that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I grew up in Chicago, right, right here on the west side. And, you know, I can't, I'd be up here doing work and stuff from time to time. Now, look, right where I grew up at, man, it's a place that's just selling, uh, dang tombstones, man. You see these? They got tombstones just lined up outside. Now, bro, I know when you say people, the places sell things, they usually put it outside so people know they sell it, but, why would you put tombstone? Like, I used to work for a furniture company. We put furniture outside, you know, uh, couches and junk, so people know we selling furniture. Maybe they see some. But you putting tombstones in the hood, just right outside like this. So would you do this if you were somewhere else, or is you just doing this because you're in Chicago in a place where many young folk didn't die or people dying at a faster rate than, you know, a lot of other places, man? You know, what do y'all think, man? Do you think there's something to be mad about? Something or it's just it is what it is. Alright, I really was kinda worried about putting this out, but I'ma go ahead and just put it out, man. It's whatever it is what it is, man. But um, you know, it's a it's a this here's a picture from um New Orleans where they had zombies working plantations. So after slavery was over with, you know, they still needed to find somebody to do that labor for free and for cheap. So, hey, who gonna do it cheaper than a zombie? So it's a lot of stories about dog mane. Uh, you know, dog mane is kind of like a werewolf, but it's also a dog woman. Now, the dog woman, beautiful man. You know, she she got like a beautiful form, but then she got like the straight up dog form. Now, now the dog form, you know, they ain't pretty like this one, but this form right here, like that right there, man, beautiful. But, but I tell you what though, if you see Shaw, <laughs> don't think that uh, don't try to holler at her and get her number, man. You better get the move. Especially if the moon is full, boy. If there's a full moon, she finna eat every piece of you. Alright, so I'm gonna tell y'all about the wind negro. Now the wind negro, what she do is is it's like if you out in an abandoned place of the woods or something, it will call you. 
but it's gonna call you from like an old girlfriend, an old girlfriend voice. So you hear, you be like, man, what the, that sound like? You know, I sound like uh, Shaniqua. So you know, then next thing you know, you hear it again. So then you say, man, that is Shaniqua. So now you go to go see her and go figure out what's going on. But really, it's this whole monster thing just luring you in. And once you get close, you know, it's going to look like that person. But once you get right up on it, that's when it switched to the, to the like, monster form. And uh, it might let you live, depending on how fast she is. 